Good evening, everyone. Sorry about that. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all to the board. To ask for translation, please go to the corner of the room to get material. Translations happening at the same time? Okay. Let's try it again. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all. Yeah, I still hear it too. Just once to see everybody. Oh, yeah. I got two of them. One should be on. All right. Here we go. Time's a charm. Oh, I still hear it. We're oh. waiting because we're hearing translation at the same time. So just one second, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Try it again. Okay. Good evening, everyone. There we go. Buenas tardes a todos. <laughs> you want to try it now? Try it now. Oh, okay. Good evening, everyone. There we go. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all to our board meeting tonight. To access translation, please click on the globe icon below or at Dejan, you can go to the corner of the room to get materials. We are returning from closed session. After our opening procedures, the public will have the opportunity to make public comment. The board has changed public comment. The, the board has changed the public comment format. The board has changed the public comment format. We have opportunities on the agenda items in person through the Zoom app and by the telephone at the beginning of the meeting. Public comment will last one hour. The time allotted for each speaker is two minutes. If you are attending the meeting in person, you will need to submit a request to address the board form to indicate your desire to speak on, on, any, on an agenda item. After it's been turned into staff, they are placed in the order of when they were turned in. We also call on speakers one at a time and alternating between public comment at Dijon and one on Zoom. If participating via Zoom, you will need to raise your hand by clicking the appropriate icon in the Zoom app or by pressing star nine if assessing the meeting by phone. No yielding of time or substitution of speaker if permitted. The public will also have opportunity to make public comment on agenda items after the staff presentation for each discussion and action item. The public will have 10 minutes per item and one minute per speaker. Due to the Brown Act, board members cannot discuss items that are not on the agenda and do not usually respond to items presented in public comment. Now let's move to our opening procedures. First, we'll have the pledges, uh, Pledge of Allegiance. If you are willing and able, please rise. Dr. Hurst, if you would do the pledge. Absolutely. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Dr. Hurst. Now we'll move to the land acknowledgement. Clerk gonzalez Hoy, will you please do the land acknowledgement? Absolutely. We recognize that we are presently on the lands of the Chichenyo, Muwekma, Kark, and Ohlone peoples and acknowledge them as the first inhabitants of the land we currently occupy. Thank you. 
Clerk Gonzalez Hoy, thank you. We are working on the student video. We think we found a solution where the students, you will hear the students do the land acknowledgement. So we're working on that. Clerk Gonzalez Hoy, again, thank you for that. Now we're moving to the labor and body recognition. I acknowledge that the burden of environmental exploitation and systemic injustice falls upon the labor of black and brown bodies in the building of this country and its institutions. I remember that black and brown people were born and died working this land against their will for generations. I also acknowledge the continued contributions of the labor of survivors over the centuries to today. All of all immigrant labor, including voluntary, involuntary, trafficked, forced, and undocumented peoples in the building of what we refer to as the United States. That is by Dr. Rochelle Rogers Bard. Dr. Hurst, may we please have roll call? Absolutely. President Smith folds. Good evening, everyone here. Trustee Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. Good evening, here. Trustee Reckler. Good evening, I'm present. Trustee Phillips. This time he is absent. Trustee Christian. Good evening, present. Trustee Palcar. Good evening, here. Trustee Abdu Gaparov. Good evening, present. All present but one. Thank you so much, Dr. Hurst. Can we now have a report or ratification of closed session? Absolutely. Regarding agenda item A2.1, by unanimous vote with Trustee Phillips absent, the board voted to approve separation agreement with employee ID number 151724, approved date. February 7th, 2004. Regarding agenda item A2.2, the board voted to approve the special education settlement agreement in OAH case number 202-311-0880. The board voted as follows. Trustee Reckler, yes. Trustee Christian, yes. President Smith folds, yes. Trustee Clark Gonzalez Hoy, yes. Trustee Phillips absent, and that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hurst. Dr. Hurst, before we begin public comment, do you have anything that you would like to say? Absolutely. Uh, we wanted to share to the entire WCC USD community that we've received um, some concerns about the postponement of middle and KH school athletic activities. We wanted to assure you that these activities will continue. Again, they will continue. We have identified the necessary funding to support, continue to the sports programs. Please know that we do apologize for any confusion in this matter. The sports games and practices will continue as normal. Please contact your school site for the next scheduled games. We wish all student athletes a great game and a great season. Additionally, we wanted to share with you that we have received concerns about a resolution coming to the board and being approved. And I wanted to share with all of you and have responded as well that the board at no time has directed the superintendent to bring that particular resolution to the board for this meeting or any future meeting at this time. We are reviewing board policy and using board policy 9322 to help guide us as resolutions do come forward and whether or not they belong on the agenda. Again, just wanted to share with the community that that particular resolution has not come to the board this time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Hurst, for the clarity. We are now going to move to public comment. I'm going to read again about our public comment. Members of the public are invited to speak to the board about any matter that is not otherwise on the agenda and is related to issues affecting public education in WCCUSD. Public comment will last approximately 60 minutes. The time allotted for each speaker is two minutes. Individuals wishing to speak must submit a WCCUSD public comment form or if participating via Zoom, individuals will need to raise their hand in the Zoom app prior to the beginning. 
Due to the Brown Act, members cannot discuss items not on the agenda and do not usually respond to items presented in public comment. Staff, do we have any public comment? Yes, we do. Go ahead, let's start with the uh, in the room first and then we'll alternate. Our first public comment is Linda Johnson. Hold on one second, ma'am. If you look on your microphone in front of you, there's a little person with a face. If you touch that person, it'll turn your mic on. Okay. The, student, the students that we serve are some of the most vulnerable in the community. They are also some of the most resilient and inspiring when put in an environment that is safe and conducive to their ability to focus on their education, they thrive. One attitude that the overwhelming, one attribute that the overwhelming majority of new gateway to college students arrive with is unresolved trauma. Much of the time it is not only unresolved, but unreported as well. This is for a variety of reasons, but one of the most common I hear is that there are no trusted resources they can access and don't feel as if anyone cares. They are afraid to be exposed. There were days when I showed up at Adams Junior High after having just been sexually molested. I arrived at school to be asked to focus on English, math, or history. I quit school after my first day right here at Harry Ells High School because of my mistrust of adults for obvious reasons. No one ever knew what I was dealing with and I was just considered lazy and a problem. Every one of our staff members has their own story. Our collective life experiences give us the intuition to recognize trauma. Our smaller size allows the staff to get to know each student personally, therefore forging relationships. This gives each student and adult an adult that they can trust, one that will recognize when something is just not right. Although we can't measure it or quantify it, this is what allows the students at Gateway to College to succeed. This is why the students attend classes from at Gateway when they would not at other schools. Gateway students are offered the opportunity to experience being a college student while still in high school. They are taken out of the chaos and immaturity of the traditional high school experience where they were not successful and they thrive in a setting that makes them feel safe, allows them to be who they are and to every extent possible learn in a way that works for them. At the end of the day, we have a group of students that are still hanging out in the office space when we get ready to go home hours after their classes end. This is because they feel safe and cared for. They can be found working on homework together, playing games or just sitting around talking and being kids. The alternative for the majority of these kids is hanging out in the streets and getting into trouble, which is what many of them were doing before coming to Gateway. Closing this life-saving resource for our at-risk youth is unconscionable and our community needs to be informed of what is at risk, our most precious resource. I am here tonight to ask that the board reconsider the message they are sending to our community's most vulnerable students. Thank you. Our next public comment is Robert Mandel. Please unmute yourself. Good evening, board. My name is Bob Mandel. I'm a member of the Adult School Teachers United bargaining team. The board has shown considerable leadership in the last 18 months by overruling staff recommendations to lay off K-12 teachers and support staff and playground supervisors. Our union members are here tonight to ask you to vote to direct management to settle a contract with us. Number one, to honor 30 contract articles that it has long since signed off on and repudiated about a year ago. Number two, sign the remaining five articles, particularly the one that recognizes that 
our union represents every single adult ed teacher. That is what PERB certified in 2017. That's what management recognized for four years, and that, too, is repudiated. And currently even says only eight of the 80 of us are union members. Number three, give us the raise we deserve. Management had spent $149,000 on legal fees in a year. That would be an 11% raise, and it's earmarked another 227000 to try to break us. That would be a 17% raise. Thank you. Please vote directly. Next public comment is Carrie Siak. Siak yeah, sorry. Hi, my name is Carrie Shakwa, and I'm an employee at Gateway to College. On January 24th, there was an item on the board agenda here, including many contracts, such as copy machines, online learning formats, and out of state travel even food budgets for meetings. However, on line 23 of this Excel spreadsheet, you will see the expiration of Gateway to College contract, um, all listed to be eliminated. The way in which this was hidden within an Excel spreadsheet buried deep within an agenda item is disheartening and dishonest of the school board. We ask that the board reconsider the closing of such a valuable school for the district's most vulnerable students. Misrepresenting Gateway to College as on a list of contracts with no direct student impact make it, it makes it appear as if Gateway to College is just another contract that will have little impact on students. In fact, Gateway to College is a school site. We serve WCCUSD's most vulnerable students. We are housed at Contra Costa College. This eliminates any overhead costs. The document claims that we are a cost of $601,000. However, I'd like to show that we are not. That money is money that we earn. These monies come to Gateway to College as ADA payment. Some may try to claim that it is ADA that the district would be able to keep if not for Gateway to College. Here are some facts that will show that these monies are not monies that the district will be able to recoup by closing Gateway to College. Gateway to College serves 16 to 20 year old students that have already dropped out of high school, are at risk of dropping out of high school, or will age out before graduation. At Gateway to College, our students actually attend their classes, take college courses to meet their high school graduation requirements, and get instructions from real teachers in the room with them, as proven by our ADA. For most, if not all of these students, at um, this is the last opportunity they have to receive a high school diploma. On the contrary, students still enrolled in school within West Contra Costa Unified simply do not attend for a variety of reasons, including but the two minutes is up, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Our next public comment is Maris Arnold. Please unmute yourself. Muted. Good evening, board. My name is Maris Arnold, and I'm one of your ESL teachers and a proud member of Adult School Teachers United, which PERB certified in 2017. Your management bargaining team so far has spent almost $150,000 on legal fees defending their anti-labor actions. That $150,000 from the adult school budget earmark for adult school instruction could have gone to salary increases. We haven't had a raise in four years. The management team 
had signed off on 30 contract articles during the last five years of bargaining and then reneged on them. They flout the rules and laws just like Trump. They treat us as enemies to be defeated at all costs rather than seeing us all as one educational community doing our best for our students. Please use your power and wisdom to see it to it that Astu gets a fair contract and Our next public comment is Molly Maloney. Good evening. My name is Dr. Molly Maloney of Go Public Schools. I'm also a Richmond resident and a parent in the district. In our recent Kids Can report, which we have copies for you tonight, we have a special section on literacy outcomes in the district. And one thing that really jumps out in the data is how little has changed over the past almost decade. Literacy rates in West Contra Costa have been largely flat over these years, with just one in three students on grade level for ELA. If we take into consideration the declining enrollment numbers, we can see the actual number of students in our district on level is even lower, 640 fewer students we're on level last year in the SBAC compared to the first year of the SBAC in 2015. One in three students on level means two in three students are not. Translated district-wide, that's over 17,000 students who are not meeting standards in ELA. What will their life experiences and outcomes be? We may have become used to these numbers, but we should not be numb to them where they're not just numbers, but real kids. The data shows us that what we are doing in literacy right now is not working and change is needed. We cannot keep taking the same approach to literacy and just hoping that somehow things will get better. But change really is possible. Research shows that making a commitment to effective, systematic and explicit literacy instruction can make a huge difference in the outcomes and lives of children. We have an opportunity to make real changes so that this can happen, which my colleague, Natalie Walchuk, will be speaking about in just a moment. Thank you. Our next public comment is James Nebelman. Please unmute yourself. Yes, my name is Jim Nebelman. I'm an ESL teacher at Dijon in the mornings. I love my job. But I'm here tonight to ask you to support ASTU, our union, Adult School Teachers United. And we it's been five years now or more that we've been trying to get a contract. And other speakers have gotten into some of these details uh, of the obstruction that unfortunately the district has been involved in. Um, including five PERB actions that the district actually had to spend almost $150,000 in legal fees for. And that money was taken out of money earmarked for instructional programs. Did did you know this? Were you aware of this? It, to me, it doesn't even sound like it's legal. And they have ear earmarked another 227000 of our money that is earmarked should be earmarked for adult school programs to help the adults in our community. People like my students from Yemen and from uh, throughout Latin America and other countries around the world who are coming here to, in, to try to have a better life and learn English in our classes. Why is the district posing so many obstacles to us? It seems like union busting to me when, when I hear that the district refused to recognize teachers like me because I, I teach a class that's not charging a fee. That's their latest excuse. They'll only support, they'll only recognize teachers who teach classes where there's no fee. 
And before that, they were saying that our teachers who teach at night, who are also members of UTR, couldn't also be in our union, even though the law is very clear on that, that they could be. So again, I implore the, the, the board to take action tonight to vote in favor of directing the bargaining team for the district to act in good faith. Thank you very much. Our next public comment is Natalie Walchuk. Good evening. My name is Natalie Walchuk. When I first started at Go Public Schools in 2016, my youngest child was in the fourth grade, and 35% of our district students were on level in reading. Today, my son has graduated high school, and 32.5% of students are on level. Over the course of these eight years, we have changed superintendents, central office leaders, board members, and textbooks numerous times, and yet results have remained relatively constant. What's clear to me is that while we have pockets of growth, we do not have a district-wide solution. Thank you, Dr. Hurst, for naming literacy as your top priority this year. To date, initial conversations and efforts to find a new path forward have included only internal district representatives. When COVID rocked our world, medical professionals did not pull up their proverbial drawbridges to try to solve the problem solely within their internal team. They welcomed input, shared data, transparently reported findings, and vulnerably owned missteps. As we face this complex challenge, we must do the same. We must seek out ideas, expertise, input, and innovation, both within and beyond district borders. We ask that staff and the board welcome additional voices and perspectives to the table to develop a system-wide strategy to serve all children. This strategy cannot be grounded solely in the selection of a textbook or curriculum. Rather, it must be a clear definition of what every child's le literacy learning journey will entail over the course of a day, a month, a week, or a year. What are the non-negotiable elements that will drive our pedagogical choices, instructional calendar, professional development focus, and monetary investments? How can we ensure that every student becomes proficient in language comprehension and word recognition, a skilled writer, and a proficient public speaker? And how do we ensure that our every teacher has paid training and collaboration time, resources, and materials to meet student needs. Thank you. Our next public comment is Jeremiah Rome. Please unmute yourself. Hello, my name is Jeremiah Rome, and I teach at Helms Middle School. I'd like to update you on my concerns about teaching vacancies this year. The introduction of Teach Start fellows and one credential teacher have eased some of the pressure that other teachers faced uh, to use their planning time in order to cover classes. And many of my colleagues feel like they're once again able to do the things they need to do to function. Collaboration has improved and so has morale in what has been a very stressful and frustrating year. Um, but we're still not doing right by our students. Every student deserves continuity and stability in their education. They should not be forced to accept finally getting a new long-term substitute 100 days into the school year. Students at my site are losing years of progress in core classes waiting for a teacher. It should not be an unfulfilled aspiration to have a qualified teacher in every class on day one. That's the bare minimum. And now there are threats of reduction in force, which baffle me. And it feels like we've entered a vicious cycle. And when you look at why this district is hemorrhaging students, I wonder what reason we're giving families to stay, especially in Title I schools that are facing the brunt of these shortages. These families who are leaving are exercising their responsibility to look out for their children because the district is not living up to its responsibility to do the same. Um, as I have some time remaining, I'd also like to express my support for the Gateway to College and the adult educators present and speaking out tonight. Thank you. Our next public comment is Sam Clear. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Sam Clear, and I've been a site rep at Siege for almost seven years. I love working here, and I love this community. 
Therefore, the current conditions leave me speechless and heartbroken. We started out the year with four classrooms without credentialed teachers, and there are still four classrooms without credentialed teachers. Our vacancy crisis didn't start this year. Within the past seven years, I haven't worked a single year with every teaching position filled for the entire year. Each year, we have started with open positions or teachers have left within the school year. At this point, I've known many of the students since they were very young. For some students at third grade, I have been the first credentialed year-long educator. I have had to watch these students work without a teacher at Stege and then continue on to secondary without teachers as well. The vacancy crisis is spread within the Kennedy family and specifically through Title I schools. The inequitable learning opportunities in this district are unacceptable. How are we addressing the vacancy crisis? What are we doing? Currently, I'm trying to explain to children and families why they don't have teachers. I don't have any answers except for the fact that they are being ignored. We need to act with urgency. Thank you. Our next public comment is Maisha Harris-Gash. Please unmute yourself. Good evening and happy Black History Month. So one, I wanted to say that I agree with the comment around literacy. Um, I'm 10 toes down with that and support. Um, but with this being Black History Month, um, just makes me think about some things that I have been through growing up um, in my life. And just like, imagine if when I was 10 years old, my fifth grade teacher told me that he did not like black people. And as a 10 year old, I told him, his name was Mr. Beard. I said, that's too bad, I'm not going anywhere. And that's one of the things that shaped my life and has shaped my career. And when I work with students, I'm at Kennedy High School, I have black, Latino, Asian students. And I want to empower my students to know who they are, who they come from and what their history is. So this month, every day I'm doing like a today in black history. But when I even share that, I also tell my students who are not black to investigate, to learn. If you have elders in your family, to ask them, where do we come from? And then remembering just because we say Latino does not mean Mexico. So I specifically and intentionally say, you know, for my students who are from El Salvador, from Guatemala, from Nicaragua, from Peru, from Cuba, you know, so just I want to say it and I want to call it out loud. I also want to thank my colleague who reached out to me because she has seen what I've been posting about Black adventures. And she was like, you know, I'm a third grade teacher. What is that site? Because I want to um, expose and share that with my students. So I wanted to call that out. And I, I thank her for reaching out um, to me. And so with all that being said, Black his happy Black History Month. Know who you are, regardless of what your background is, where you come from, own it love it, and share it with others. Everybody have a great night. Our next public comment is Carissa Provenza. Good evening, board members and Superintendent Hurst. My name is Carissa Provenza. I'm a lawyer on the education equity team at Public Advocates. On behalf of three West Contra Costa teachers, we recently filed Williams complaints to address the vacancies at Stege Elementary, Helms Middle, and Kennedy High. I'm here tonight because recently we have not seen the district properly follow the procedure of handling and reporting Williams complaints, and we'd like to ensure that these vacancies are remedied in a timely manner. Students are entitled to permanent and legally authorized teachers in each of their classrooms. Unfortunately, that is not the case at Stege, Helms, Kennedy, and some of the other highest need schools in West Contra Costa. Instead, what we're seeing in West Contra Costa is the illegal use of substitutes to temporarily fill these vacancies, which has led to hundreds of students not having a stable and permanent teacher for the majority of this school year. At Helms Middle School, there are vacancies in eighth grade English, eighth grade math, eighth grade science, and a combination seventh, eighth grade math class in the Newcomers Academy. How do we expect these students to be prepared for high school when the district has failed to provide them with the permanent qualified teachers they deserve? We understand that this is a statewide issue, but West Contra Costa is facing far more teacher vacancies than its surrounding districts. 
illegally filling these vacancies with substitutes or having West Contra Costa teachers work additional hours to cover the classes are not sustainable solutions. We urge the district to take immediate action to fill these vacancies and to solicit the input of teachers, students, and families of color in developing a comprehensive recruitment, development, and hiring plan. Thank you. Our next public comment is Betty Canal. Please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. Yes, hello. Am I on? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. My name is Betty Cano, and I would like to speak in support of the Adult Student uh, uh, Student Teachers United uh, contract and call for the support of the school board uh, for adults, adult education, which is terribly imperiled. And um, it makes me so upset because we're talking about so many what, billions and billions uh, going to wars around the world where pe few people have visited or even can point to on a map. And yet here there's a war on our streets and pe people, adults, uh, seniors who are fighting for really uh, nickels and dimes for their uh, senior activities. And I really feel that um, it's shameful for this society that it's not providing those kind of basic um, supports for all sectors of our community, especially for seniors. I mean, we're you're going to be seniors too in 10, 20, 30 years, and we'll want to have the kind of support from society that um, you have deserved, you deserve and have worked for all your life. So, um, I'm just wanting to support the A ASTU union efforts. Thank you. Our next public comment is Salon Harrison. Happy Black History Month board. How are you guys all? So it's a couple of things I wanna start off with. I wanna tell you, thank you for the decorations. It looks lovely for those that can't see. Um, another thing I wanted to share was we need our scowl. We need our scowl. Um, our Oasis scowl has, I've been coming to this board and complaining for y'all know how long about the Apex. We have 44 Apex and y'all know that we have not had that in the history of our district and we need our scowl. We also need you guys to make sure that our climate is taken care of. We, Our children are over-identified in suspensions, so please make sure that you take care of our climate department and the uh, director there. And we also um, want to make sure that our children's resources are kept in place for our activities and things that this district has done. We ain't asking y'all to grow nothing, but maintain what we have had for our children, because that's important. And... I would just like to recognize all the people that the board and the people that met with us regarding our school. We do want a Swahili language school for our children, and we are fighting for something different in our district for our children, something that will bring this a, a district, a destination district for our people to come and others to come to in our, and it's Black History Month. And we want to make sure that y'all understand that we want a school, something that recognizes us and, and make us feel a part of the school community too. So um, I, think I, I think I got everything this evening. Thank you for your time. I'm complete. Our next public comment is Rosa Menjavar. Please unmute yourself. Good evening, Superintendent Hart and Trust of the School Board. My name is Rosa Menjivar. I am manager of the Community Engagement and Advocacy Program of the John Latina Future Leader at the Latina Center. I'm here today on behalf of the Latina Center and concern a student to say that we do not support the fighting of the middle and high school community outreach work at, that will be take place, place on March 15. We are concerned that only learn 
at the last minute that this could happen and a disappointment we there was little community outreach done to let family students and community organization know that this could happen it seemed like you all will be discussing this under agenda item e7 and number seven where there is a pdf that say more than 60, 60 scouts will be fired before the end of the school year. We didn't happen. We didn't have reasonable notice around this. As you may know, the Latina Center, as long as 12 community-based organizations, supported a successful student-led advocacy effort that last spring last spring to secure the positions of the scouts in our West Contra Costa community schools. I'm so proud of our students who wrote a letter collecting 653 signatures, 576 students, and 51 parents, and presented it, presented it on March 15 last year to the West Contra Costa School Board. We appreciate the board deciding to keep the positions of the scouts. Please listen our voice of the our students and organization and parents. Our next pub our next public comment is Pam Tillou. Our next public comment is Andre Toisson. Hello. Hello, my name is Andre Toisson, um, former graduate uh, from Gateway to College, uh, graduating in 2017. Still amazes me that I can still say that because without them, I don't think I'll be able to stand here and speak on their behalf. I just wanna say Gateway has um, made a tremendous impact on my life and shaped me to the person I am today. Um, I was always a troubled kid growing up and going to school, I always didn't want to be there and never really cared for it because I always thought these teachers don't care for me, so why should I care? So I was always trying to find ways to like leave school and trying to not be there at all. So I came out here in 2012 from Indianapolis. Uh, my first school I went to was El Cerrito High School and as soon as I got there, I was doing the same thing. Didn't care about school, didn't want to be there, always a chewing kid. Left there because um, I was on the verge of not graduating. So I went to North Campus and tried to graduate from there. Didn't graduate from there, then I found Gateway. And Gateway, um, I'm so glad I found that school because, um, sorry, um, it really, it really made an impact on me and they took time to really understand every so-called troubled kid that was there. And they made it uh, uh, like a goal for them to really understand everybody's perspective on life because everybody's going through situations and sometimes the teachers don't really care for it. You know what I mean? Like growing up from experience in school, I was always like told that, oh, you're not gonna make it, you're not gonna do this, but, and, I don't think you should be able to hear that from, from the teachers as a, as a student because it really crushes you because they're supposed to be there in a safe environment. They're supposed to help you be be a better person in the future. And Gateway, they helped you and they actually understand every troubled kid that's there that's having problems. They have a goal to do that. And that's all I want to say. Thank you. Our next public comment is Ling Shea. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Ling Shea and I have been in this district since 2008. And I've been a taxpayer, my kids grew up here and we love it here. Unfortunately, we found out that the aquatic program in our high school is always teetering on uncertainty. Is it going to be canceled? Is it going to be on? It, it's caused a lot of stress with our athletes. And there has been a direct correlation with kids in sports 
and academics. These kids are, most of our kids are 4.0 kids. They swim and they, and they're amazing in, in school. So I'm just, I, I'm just not sure why every year there's always a budget crisis or, or whatnot. I, I'm not sure what's happening behind closed doors that the, the, program is always being sort of on the teeter, on the, on the line of being dropped. And this just happened. Um, the 2024 season is already three days late. Um, and we find, and you guys finally approved, um, for the kids to go swim at the swim centers because you guys chose not to build the pools at the high school. So I, I implore you to please build this budget into next year, because I believe next year, the budget hasn't been set. And the and the programs, the, the aquatic program might be cut, and that would be a tremendous loss. And you can see there are all these swimmers here, water polo players that we just they just finished their season. They're ready to go into swim season right now, and they're four. And these are all four kids. They're doing amazing, and and it's just such a great program that I I just think that it should never be cut. Um, we just want equal representation as the other sports like football, basketball. Thank you. Our next public comment is Kelly McLaren. Please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. Our next public comment is Zoom user. Please unmute yourself. Good evening. My name is Kate Burkhart, and I'm a. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Hear you. Uh, this is Kate Burkhart, and I'm concerned about the principal for the adult school. I understood that it was going to be announced and appointed tonight, but I heard nothing from the closed session. We've been struggling with the interim principal who um, is leaving at the end of the month, and I hope that we have a successful, enthusiastic principal that's been appointed by the district. I'm also concerned about the community, uh, the older adult programs at the senior centers for the adult school. We have some very active programs that have been very helpful for seniors, keeping them in their homes. And we hope that we can continue. We hope that we get the district support for that. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Our next public comment is Andres Castro. Hello, I've just recently got out of Gateway and when, I'm not gonna lie, when I first got there, I was super scared, I was nervous and I felt like it was just gonna be a repeated version of my time in high school. I was scared to ask for help and even, and it was never offered. You feel like they don't really care about you. And almost immediately after I got in the gateway, I knew that it was it was going to be different. It was going to be the complete opposite. Because the moment I, I went there, it didn't feel like just another school where there's teachers that just want to show me something and then get me the hell out of there. They actually care about me. They want me to learn things. They want me to learn how to succeed. And the people that you meet there, they they're just like you they struggle and they have problems. And throughout my time there, I got to befriend them and it's gotten to a point where I see Gateway more like a family than I do with school. And when I got to meet these people, I got to see that a lot of them are troubled. I've heard stories that shake me to my core, that, that sound like things that shouldn't be heard by people younger than me that are 15, 16 years old. And it's these same students that at the previous high school got nothing but Fs and Ds but they go to Gateway and with, within their first semester, they're getting nothing but A's and B's. And that shows change, that shows heart. 
And that's not, that's not, that's, that just shows the potential of the students if they receive the right help. And that's students that weren't getting that help at their previous schools. And that's something they got almost immediately at Gateway. These students who were troubled and were having these problems and that were doing terrible at their old school were the same students that were encouraging each other to do their work, to get to class on time, and they actually wanted to show up. They didn't feel pressure to show up. They didn't feel like they had to and they just want to finish this and leave. They actually wanted to go to school and to learn and to do better for themselves. And that's because of Gateway and its lovely staff. Thank you for your time. Our next public comment is Alamo Brown. Please unmute yourself. I'd like to say good evening, board. This is Rodney Alamo Brown, community advocate here in the city of Richmond, California. There's an old saying my mother used to say, and it was when I is replaced with we, even illness becomes wellness. I read an interesting article today in the Ed Source, and I was a little disappointed at the same time, but I also understand the severity of what's going on within the sector of the district. There's psychologists who are getting burnt out. There's psychologists who are not coming back. Overall, it's become a pandemic of sort for our children who continue to deal with the remnants and the residuals of the pandemic. Now, we all understand that there's budget necessary budget cuts that has to be made. I think in 2019, Mr. Phillips mentioned that we continue to kick the can down the proverbial road. However, the day of reckoning has come and we all have to make difficult decisions and choices. Now, there's a lot that hangs in the balance here concerning teachers and folk who work as service providers within the sector of our district. And these are things that's gonna come to pass. However, I think that as we continue to do the yeoman's work, and I'm speaking of those teachers who come to work every day through thick and thin, through hell and high water, and deal with the troubled things that's in front of them, who continue to be great service to our community. We have to understand the severity of it. We have to get to the point to where we have to stop finger pointing. There was finger pointing at, last, at the last meeting where the, the individual stated that the superintendent should take a pay cut because he's high on the food chain. Well, that's not necessarily correct. When you look at the board, the board is the first purveyor of the fruit. The board is the highest people that's on the food chain, not the superintendent. As we all know that the board is the one who choose the superintendent to become the superintendent. So we can't plus, we can't scapegoat each other. We can't put blame on one another. We have to work cohesively together as a unit. God bless you all and happy Black History Month. Aloha. Our next public comment is Walden White. Good evening, can everyone hear me clearly? I just wanna say, number one, we need our scouts. Uh, my name is Walden White. I'm a HBCU uh, attendee myself. Uh, my daughter and my son went to El Cerrito High School. And if it wasn't for the HBCU tour, they wouldn't have gone. They would have been attending a regular school here. My daughter graduated from Prairie View University. She's now in Southern University in law school in her first year. My son has attended Fresno State uh, in this first year of college. And I know numerous other people I can talk to in the community that actually have never seen the HBCU. They don't know what it looks like. They've never been outside of their community. I've been in Richmond for 23 years. This place was horrible. There was a time at this time of night, I would not be in this neighborhood outside walking. And I've seen the changes. I've seen the actual material changes. When a child goes to school, they see something other than their neighborhood and they can actually make a difference by graduating, by coming back to that actual neighborhood, by making an actual difference, by sitting on a council, by sitting on a board, by having actual life experience, by not being in the streets. There is a school to prison pipeline that is very real, very real. And I wanna to speak to one particular person, Juanita Towns, even in her own life, her own son, had he not been exposed to HBCUs, he would have not attended. And he, right now, he is a teacher. He is a teacher teaching other people. That is powerful. Coming right here from Richmond in one of the worst periods and periods and places in Richmond. We need our scouts. And this HBC two, uh, HBCU tour has to continue, has to continue. We have to make room in the budget for people like this. It is immaterial, immaterial for Black young people to see this, to see 
in places of excellence, not just Barack Obama on TV, Michelle Obama on TV, or on a poster. They actually need to see someone that's actually in school supporting each other. Greek fraternities and, and sororities, all of these things that go into Black culture. Happy Black History Month. Thank you. Our next public comment is Kumi Yanagira. Please unmute yourself. Hello, um, my name is uh, Kumiyana Gihara. This is my third year at Kennedy, and it's also the third year I've spoken during public comment regarding vacancies at my site. Um, I also haven't had a single school year where my site has been fully staffed. And in fact, uh, last school year, I was the only science teacher who stayed from the previous year. And as a second year, somehow I was already the most veteran Kennedy science teacher. Instead of filling vacancies, the solution at our site has been finding teachers to period sub or even work 120. Many of my colleagues, myself included, are working 120% FTE, which means we've given up one of our prep periods to teach an extra class. First and foremost, these vacancies mean we are failing our students by not providing a full-time credentialed teacher for them. But this is a burden on the staff too. Without prep time at school, I have to lesson plan and grade at home, spending hours of my weekday evenings and weekends working. And I know the same goes for my colleagues as well. And knowing that my colleagues and I carry so much of this burden on our shoulders, it makes it even more difficult when one of us has to call in sick or can't come in due to whatever is happening outside of school. We have lives too, after all. There have been times when I felt under the weather and probably should have stayed home to recover, but didn't because I felt guilty about asking my colleagues to sub for my classes. We are all stretched thin and exhausted. Our students deserve better and the teachers do too. Thank you. Our next public comment is Ariadna Medina. Hello everyone, my name is Ariana Medina. I'm currently still a student here at Gateway. I'll be graduating this summer at the end of May. I used to attend Richmond High School. My time there wasn't as great. The support system there wasn't great. The teachers never really helped me when I would ask for help throughout my freshman and sophomore year. They made me feel worthless. The campus wasn't as great either. I never felt completely safe when I would go to school every day. The beginning of junior year is when I started here at Gateway. At first, I was afraid of it being the same as Richmond High, but the students and teachers here changed my mind. It was nowhere near like Richmond High. The students here had the same goals as me. They seen they had a second chance and of getting a diploma. We were all focused on the same thing. The support you get from these students and teachers is beyond great. Miss Carey has truly been like a second mother to me and to all these other students. She makes us feel safe, make sure we're, we're doing everything we can to accomplish our goals and that we're doing okay mentally and physically. Where else would you find someone like that? Nowhere. Last semester, I was truly going through it. I lost a lot of important people in my life, and the only person that was truly there for me and my family and helped me in every way she can was Miss Gary. She helped me get through it, helped me stay on top of my work, and helped me do my best to show up no matter how sad or drained I was. My family and Miss Carey are the reasons why I'm here standing. The support she gives to her students is pure love. She is the reason why most of her graduates and current students here at Gateway are where they are right now in life. But most of you won't see her the way I see her or this program in my eyes. My young brother picked on me and made fun of me multiple times because I, was in, because I wasn't gonna graduate on time and because I was dumb or, and it made me feel worthless. And Currently, he is going through the same thing as I did, at risk of not graduating on time. And now he has decided to come to Gateway but he, because he wants to make something out of his life. With the choice you guys are making, you are hurting multiple students and saw, who saw this Gateway as their, as their second chance. My brother is devastated because you guys are now taking that chance away from him. What is he going to do now? Our next public comment is Ethan Sorsha. Just one second. Thank you, sir. Just one second. Um, staff, how many more public comments do we have? Because we need to extend it a little. 
12 board, I would like to propose that we extend the public comment to cover all 12 people that are here to speak. Is that okay without any objection? Thank you. We're gonna continue to have all the public comment. Thank you, go ahead, sir. Thank you. My name is Ethan Sorcher and I am a teacher at Montalban Manor K-8. Dr. Hurst, as part of the LCAP process, you solicited community feedback. When it came to staffing, the community was clear. Our students are successful when they have trusted adults they can count on in their schools. At our school, for both students and families, one of those trusted adults is Nelda Welton, our bilingual clerk. Over two thirds of our community identify as Hispanic or Latino, and many of the adults speak Spanish as a primary language. As the only fluent Spanish speaker on our clerical staff, Nelda is essential to the day-to-day -day operations at our site. When families come with questions, when we need to communicate about students, when students aren't showing up for school, Nelda has both the institutional knowledge and the language skills to make sure our students and families are supported. I understand that we need to make difficult decisions to secure our continued independence as a district. Cutting bilingual clerks might make sense on paper, but it will lead to long-term losses. In October, we needed families to fill out multi-purpose income forms so that we could continue to get funding for our school lunches and programs. School and district-based mass communications had been unsuccessful. Ultimately, it came down to Nelda working outside her contracted hours, making call after call after call to our Spanish-speaking families to help them understand the form and complete it. This is just one example of the many ways Nelda goes above and beyond to help serve our students and families, and one that illustrates the short-sightedness of this decision. Without Nelda, we would not have gotten the thousands of additional dollars per eligible student, funding that far outweighs the cost of her position. The most impactful positions in our district are the ones that work closely with our students and families. Please revise your fiscal solvency plan prior to March 6th to make fiscally sound cuts that minimize the impact on our students and families. Thank you. Our next public comment is Amanda Foster. Hello, my name is Amanda Foster and I'm a proud Tiger teacher. This is my third year teaching at Vista K-12 Virtual Academy. I am currently a sixth grade supervising teacher specializing in math and science. It is an absolute privilege to serve families from all over West Contra Costa Unified School District. Students come to us for many different reasons. Students come for joyous and exciting reasons. Students come for heartbreaking reasons, facing challenges that children should not have to face. No matter how or why they became a student at Vista Virtual, students have the opportunity to continue their learning in a way that is accessible and supportive for the unique situation they are in and the unique person that they are. I have met wonderful people over the past three years. Students who have blossomed, showing incredible academic and personal growth, Students who have told me VISTA has changed their view of learning and their own future for the better. Parents who feel connected to their child's education in, a, in ways they've not before. Parents who appreciate the weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings for their students and increased teacher-student-parent communication that is inherent to independent studies. Teachers who are creative and flexible. Teachers who empower students to go boldly into their futures. We are not as visible to the public and to others in the district by the nature of our work. A school district is an ecosystem and every ecosystem has niches. I'm here today to make the niche my students and I occupy visible. We are in different physical spaces, but our interactions have created a beautiful and productive learning environment. Thank you. Our next public comment is Maria Laura Lemus. Good evening, everyone. I am here um, to discuss the non salary reduction list expiration to the Gateway College contract. 
Back in 2020, I wrote a letter in support of the Gay Widow College program. And today, in the days that continue, I will continue to support this program. Why, you may ask. I come from a family of migrant farm workers. My mom decided to move with my four siblings and I to the Richmond area for better opportunities. She didn't know much about education as she only went to the third grade. So going to high school, I had no idea of what was my steps there. I attended Pinole Valley High School and I felt very alienated. I didn't have any support or motivation, but that truly changed when I went to Gateway to College. I was one of the first 50 students who attended Gateway to College back in 2011. Since then, I gained the confidence as a student to advocate for myself and for those around me who have been pushed out of the traditional high school experience. Since graduating from Gateway to College, I transitioned into a Contra Costa College. Then, after attaining all the requirements, I transferred to UCLA, where I attained my bachelor's degree. After graduating from UCLA, I attended UC Berkeley, where I attended, where I received my master's degree. I am here to continue to advocate for this program. I can truly say and genuinely say that without this program, I really don't think that I would be here. So I truly ask that you help this program continue because there are many students out there that are facing challenges that the Gateway to College program can help with. Our next public comment is Jeffrey Bean. Staff, before you call Mr. Bean, who may be here in person, we have one person online that we need to get to. Mr. Bean, give me one second because we need to alternate to go online. So you'll be right after this person online if they're there. Kelly McLaurin, please unmute yourself. Hi, I hope you can hear me this time. My name is Kelly McLaren. I am a parent of a student in the district who is also a student athlete. Um, he also actually does three sports. He is a water polo player. He does swimming. He does volleyball. He also has done wrestling. Uh, um, I just want to express my deep, deep concern about the district maybe cutting funding for the aquatics program. Uh, the kids there really work hard and they do a terrific job. They all have really good grades and it's really important that we can keep this program running for these kids because they really need it. That's all I had to say for tonight, but thank you so much for listening. Good evening. I am Jeffrey Bean. I teach fifth grade at Shannon Elementary. Um, I love my job. Today, we had a talent show in our class. I had about seven students perform. Uh, one of my favorites was a uh, girl who's in fifth grade who uh, is usually uh, very quiet in class and she played her flute for our class. It was good to hear. Um, so thank you for not cutting our band programs. I was worried about that and I'm glad, glad that you decided to save that program. Uh, two issues tonight. Uh, number one, um, students at my school early in the year in the room next door to me were without a teacher for the first uh, several months of school. And they have a teacher now, but I'm saddened to hear about schools in um, less well-off neighborhoods in our district that are still without teachers. That's, um, it was bad enough for a few months. I can't imagine going all the way to February like that. So uh, then I hear about our union, UTR, negotiating with the district on salary, which is the thing that would help resolve this problem next year and that the district has not made much movement toward our proposal is problematic. I hope you do whatever it takes to fix that issue. Uh, second issue tonight, um, I teach fifth grade and we have a new test this year and last year called iReady. It takes a lot of time. My students are working on it right now for math this week and it's tolerable now because it's February. But when we get into uh, May, will fifth graders will have S back, English and math, 
California science test, California physical fitness test, uh, in addition to all the numerous California healthy kids survey things like that, that are brought up in, in May. And then you add to it, I ready reading and math that take multiple days to complete. Little teaching will take place in May, and I hope you do something to le lessen this burden on students. Thank you for your time. Have a good night. Our next public comment is Luke Schultz. Good evening. Uh, my name is Luke Schultz, and um, I was a student trustee on the board about five years ago, where I think some of you guys are right there. Uh, keep up the good work. Keep um, creating opportunities for yourselves. So anyway, um, this evening, my brother told me he's been a swimmer. So he's been a swimmer for the last about 15 years. And he just told me that his program in a senior year of high school is likely to be cut. Um, on another note, um, Knoll Valley High School has had five, or had four band directors in the last five years due to a lack of job security because of the way that this district has handled its budgeting. Now, recently, I've also heard that we may see further personnel cuts in our arts programs and across other athletic programs in the district. Um, now, I can speak to arts in a very special way because classes in arts are not frivolous. And I know that because I make about $45,000 a year working 15 hours a week as a college student who's a professional classical musician, thanks to the training that I got in this district. Cutting those courses means cutting potential success for students in their futures. Um, I also just accepted a position making $100 an hour as a band director in San Francisco, working a few hours a week. So as a music educator, I know I'm essential because I know that those kids need someone who's a professional musician to teach them how to play the instrument. As a swim team back here, they need a coach and they need a facility. Um, now, do you know who's not as essential is administration. The average salary of the people standing behind me is about $60,000 a year per person in the Bay Area. And the average salary of this table right here is about $275,000 a year. That is not equity, that's not diversity, that's not inclusion. And that, I mean, you got a whole group of kids right in front of you who are you who you're willing to cut the program for if need be. You've got music educators who are just trying to not live in a van who you're willing to cut. So I propose that rather than continuing to cut essential services, everyone's salary over here, everyone's salary over here, everyone's salary over here, everyone's salary over here. And then we can have a conversation about the hard choices that we have to make about our budget. Please Thank conclude you. your comment. Our next public comment is Rocker Ray. Hello, good evening board. Um, my name is Rocca Ray and I teach biology and chemistry at Kennedy. I also taught previously for four years at Helms. Um, I'm speaking out to support the Williams complaint against WCCUSD. And as I've brought, brought to this board several times, we are doing a disservice to our students with the number of vacancies at our schools. At Kennedy, we are missing English and ELD teachers amongst others at a school where half the students are English language learners. Edgenuity and a string of substitutes are simply not cutting it. Kennedy already has a graduation rate hovering around 50%. Kennedy has a student body that is experiencing or has experienced severe trauma. So for students who are already struggling, an online program or a long-term sub is the equivalent of throwing their high school career to the wolves. I urge this board to prioritize teacher vacancies at Kennedy, Stege at Helms, I suggest looking at our bloated reserves and our books and supplies budget. Thank you. Our next public comment is Todd Senegar. There's an old adage that says, how many people does it take to screw in a light bulb? The point of being is how difficult is it to simply turn on a light? The more people you have fiddling around the bulb, the longer it will take to get rid of the darkness. 
With that said, we must admit that some people like darkness because, it, because they can seemingly get away with misbehaving more easily. Darkness fosters confusion. Over the past few years, the following individuals have rotated as SELPA directors in West Contra Costa County. Steve Collins, Nick Berger, Kristen Hardy, Sonia Neely Johnson, and now it's Guthrie Fleischman. The lack of stability in this role hurts the special, special education community that is supposed to be served. Each change that takes place is a short, um, in short succession undermines the community. For example, a person knowledgeable and seasoned in this position would know that the right to review records that pertain to a student, past or present, is a right parents have. I was recently copied in an email from the current interim SELPA director stating that there are no records concerning a student from 2019 to present, covering nearly a five-year span. How is this even possible? Either the district is destroying records in contravention of record retention law and policy, or the SELPA director is attempting to deceive hoping that parents grope around in the dark, not having a clue about the rights parents and students in the district have. The merry-go-round of SELPA directors does not absolve the district from complying with regulatory compliance. As an African-American man, I see members on this board that look like me, and I'm frankly perplexed and appalled that you would allow this behavior to take place. In addition, I noticed that in the email valedic valediction from the SELPA director, it says toward equity and inclusion. Before you can even think what, about equity, it is absolutely necessary to know the history of the specific population where equity concerns arise. I think this is lacking. Certain regulatory requirements such as the right to view certain records are in Please place specifically to promote the very equity ideals that interim director claims to value. We need to do better. Our next public comment is Kelly Guerrero. Our next public comment is Marie Corso. Please unmute yourself. Hi, I am a student from Panola Valley High School. I'm a junior, and I have recently transferred from Salesian College Prep to Panola Valley. And I just want to say that the water polo and swim team have really helped me make friends and just feel safe at the new school. And it would be real like a a real shame if you cut this program because there's so many dedicated students and people on this team that are just amazing people and dedicated swimmers and deserve to have a swim team and a water polo team and the coaches are dedicated they want to see everyone get better and better and it would just be a real shame to um cut the team thank you Our next public comment is Rosalina Logwood. Um, I'm here to address the situation at um, El Cerrito High School with the head um, basketball coach, the varsity coach, Nicholas Brown. He has been verbally abusing our students that play on the team, um, also retaliating against them once we uh, something has come to our attention and we address it with him trying to follow the chain of command. So we went from speaking to him, speaking to the vice principal, and then speaking to the principal, and it seems as though everything is being brushed under the rug. There's a few of us here. I'm representing some of the other players, one of the players is here. My particular son is a senior. He couldn't be here because he was had a prior engagement. Um, I really don't want to say exactly what the coach has said, but I'll, the N-word has been used. Uh, he has told some of the students that to get the F out of my gym, shut the F up. What the F are you looking at me for? So none of the kids feel comfortable to go on to him to address anything. We just got word that one of the other students that couldn't be here that's playing tonight 
he was told that he could not play in the game. He could not suit up. And coincidentally, it was because we had a meeting yesterday to address some of these concerns with um, other administrators at the school. So one of our teammates are being uh, retaliated against as we speak. We have one of the students here right now. He was kicked off the team for no apparent reason. He made an example of him at a game at Ignacio Valley and kicked him off the team. He told him in front of his teammates, give me your uniform. You're off the team for no reason. That's not a discussion you have in front of other students. You, you pull him to the side, explain to him what he did wrong and explain why he's being kicked off the team. My son feels unsafe. He told he had told the coach, he said, I don't feel safe. I'm verbally abused. You disrespected my mother. He's done a number of things. He's yelled at me, gotten aggressive with me. And no one at the school seems to want to take care of the situation. Now, I will bring my son back when you have another meeting so he can speak to his own situations. Thank you. Our next public comment is Francisco Ortiz. Good evening, board members, Superintendent Hurst, community and staff. My name is Francisco Ortiz. I'm an alumnus of our district and fifth grade teacher at Ford Elementary. I'm also the vice president and community schools organizer for United Teachers of Richmond. I'm here tonight to urge you to prioritize the filling of teacher vacancies in our district. Although districts around us are experiencing teacher vacancies, West Contra Costa experienced a higher proportion of teacher vacancies um, than any other surrounding districts. We're more than halfway throughout our school year and students at Stege, Helms and Kennedy still don't have a permanent certificated teacher in their classroom. Our students further from opportunity are having their educational experiences uh, dis or furtherly disenfranchised because we don't have the necessary supports for our multilingual learners, for our students in transition, for our fit and foster students, and also for our black students. Teachers are one of the most important predictors for a student's success in school, and research shows that having permanent and more experienced teachers increases Black and Latinx student achievement. Filling teacher vacancies with string of substitute teachers is illegal and does not provide our students and teachers with the stability and support that they deserve. Overworking our teachers by having uh, to rely on us to cover these vacancies is unfair and unsustainable. West Contra Costa needs to invest in long-term solutions to attract and retain teachers from within the community who reflect the diverse backgrounds of our students. Please take immediate action to fill these vacancies that have led to disruptive, unsafe, and unhealthy school cultures and instability across our district. Thank you for your time. Our next public comment is Annette Pisano. Um, good evening, the board of West Contra Costa Unified School District. My name is Annette Pisano, and I have a senior currently at Pinot Valley High School. She's also a four-pointed student who has been involved in at least two sports for the whole year, um, each time she's been in, in each year in school. Um, we're asking the district to stop stalling whenever it comes to approving the, of campus rental agreements for the off-campus facilities for the athletic departments. Athletic school clubs and music programs tap into the development of our student, especially coming out of COVID. They build communities, enrich their imagination, move their bodies to help them lower their stress levels and improve their overall health. They meet new friends, learn new skills and improves their time management to balance their academic and extracurricular activities, life lessons, commitments to an activity that will last them a lifetime. The stress and threat to these students is unacceptable. The last three of the four years, there's been a delay when it comes to the aquatics program or for them even getting into the swimming pool. Um, the delay of the rental contracts wasn't approved for Pinole Valley High School until today. And that's unacceptable. Pinole, DeAnza, Richmond, and Salesians, and in the past, St. Mary's have all practiced at Contra Costa College. Not only is it important to have the practices at Contra Costa College, it just shows how easily higher education is, is accessible, because some of them do take public transportation from Pinole Valley High School to Contra Costa College. At Pinole, there's approximately 40 swimmers and 30 water polo players. They are one of 11 teams in our swim link this year. 
The aquatics program at Pinole Valley High School has been around since early 1970s. Multiple students have swam and competed at the collegiate level, become athletic directors at universities, and return to the schools at referees in water polo or in swimming. And in the last five years, Pinole Valley has produced four league MVP water polo players. So please put your students first. Also, why doesn't Kennedy have a swim team? They have a beautiful indoor facility right, right at the foot of their door. Thank you. Our next public comment is Jimena Eddy. Hello, I'm a senior at Pinole Valley High School and I swim I swim and play water polo. I'm, I'll be reading a statement from one of my teammates that was unable to be here. Um, this statement is on West Contra Costa's website. The West Contra Costa Unified School District prohibits discrimination intimidation, harassment, or bullying based on person's actual or perceived ancestry, color, disabled gender, gender identity, gender expression, immigration, immigration status, nationality, race or ethnicity, religion, sex, sexual orientation, or association with a person or a group of one or more of these actual perceived characters, characteristics. This is the argument. If West Contra Costa Unified School District prohibits, dis prohibits discrimination. Not paying for water sports in the year of 2024 to 2025 is discriminating against the students who play water sports. It isn't the students' fault that we don't have a pool at our schools. Poor yearly maintenance costs up to $1,800. There are nine high schools in this district. Four schools in our district use Contra Costa Community College pool. If all nine high schools had their own pools, they would cost roughly, the district roughly $16,200 a year. Since four schools are using a CCC pool, the school district is paying $3,000 instead of $702,000, saving $4,200. $4, there should be no delay in starting a swim season. Our swim season started on Monday, and we can't get into the pool tomorrow because it was barely signed today. And the funding that is for sports shouldn't be just towards football, just towards basketball, just towards soccer, because for all water sports, water, water polo and swimming, we don't get transportations to our games. We, we have to work together with our parents to find rides, tournaments, and away games. When football my sophomore year had buses to practice, it's overlooked. We have same numbers as other sports, such as soccer. We may not be as big, but coming out of COVID, we had we have added so many more swimmers. And for some, this is their only sport and it's discrimination and non-inclusive if this keeps happening. Our next public comment is Kelly Kari. Good evening, board members. Dr. Hurst and cabinet members. My name is Kelly Carey, a kindergarten educator at Peary's K-8 School. I am here this evening to discuss the continuing crisis facing our district. One that has been present for several years now, ensuring that all classrooms are filled with highly qualified certificated educators. I've witnessed this crisis firsthand. As an educator at Peary's for the last 11 years, I have seen dozens of teachers either leave the profession or leave the district, as well as have had and continue to have vacancies, leaving our community greatly impacted. More specifically, last year, our PE teacher was non-reelected. As to date, this position has not been filled, leaving our middle school students without a highly qualified certificated PE teacher. One of the missions at WCCUSD is to strengthen the, our community. How can this be accomplished when our scholars continually see a revolving door of educators, which directly affects the educational prosperity of our community? I urge the board to recognize this crisis head on and commit not only to aggressive recruitment strategies of new teachers, but also focus on retaining our current educators through support, respect, and fair compensation. Every student deserves to have highly qualified teachers in every classroom. The future of the WCC USD community depends on it. P.S. I always think about how I would feel if my children didn't have a highly qualified educator in their classroom. Just think about how would you feel and what would you do? Thank you. Next 
That concludes public comment. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your public comment. Um, board, let's take a five minute break. If there's no objections, we'll take a five minute. Thank you so much. Staff, can you put a five minute timer or let everyone know we'll be back in five minutes? Thank you.
Thank you everyone for that break. Uh, we appreciate it. We are going to move on after public comment. We have a um, on B7, we have a request to address the board from the Ed Fund. So we will take the request to address the board from the Ed Fund, if the Ed Fund is here or on, oh, they're on Zoom, okay. Board, remember there's no questions or comments. We're just receiving a report. Thank you. All right, good evening, Superintendent Hurst, Madam President, members of the board. Thank you for inviting us to present tonight. My name is Robert Bunce. I'm the Executive Director of the West Contra Costa Public Education Fund. The Ed Fund is thrilled to be celebrating our 40th year of working in partnership with the district to create possibilities for our students and schools. It is my pleasure to be here to share some highlights from our work from the last year. Next slide. The Ed Fund is dedicated to forging partnerships for the district, mobilizing resources for the district, and supporting equi equitable systems within the district to ensure that our students and families have what they need to realize and achieve their biggest dreams. I'm incredibly lucky to work with a small but dedicated team who lean into our mission every day on behalf of our students. Alongside me tonight is Shakira Reynolds, our Director of Strategic Partnerships, who many of you have had the privilege of working with. Shakira is going to kick off our presentation. Good evening, everyone. Next slide, please. Thank you. So, no, the last one. Thank you. So, as many of you may know, Ed Fund is the primary nonprofit community partner for centralized funding in the school district. We also sponsor over 50 fiscal projects, which bring programming and added value to our school sites. And so our, through our three major areas of fund development, fiscal sponsorship and programming, we cultivate and drive resources to bridge gaps, especially for initiatives that center students furthest from opportunity. Next slide, please. This is an overview of our highlights from the 22-23 school year. We brought in over $4 million for fiscal projects. We raised an additional $705,000 for WCCUSD initiatives. We granted $119,500 to direct ed fund grants, including $28,000 in grants for back to school App grants that went directly to teachers, $28,342 for Bradley Arts grants for 40 passion projects. We also did Bradley Arts again this year, $27,000 in Black History Month grants and $19,500 in scholarships awarded to 13 students pursuing higher education. That picture is some of our scholarship recipients for last year and we included a QR code for you to meet our 2023 scholars. Next slide, please. All right. As Shakira shared, one of the key roles the Ed Fund plays for the district is coordinating fundraising. We work in close partnership with district leadership and school leaders to identify key initiatives and then find funding partners for those initiatives. This past year, the Ed Fund helped secure $375,000 to support district-wide implementation of iReady. We were also able to secure over $200,000 to create systems and partnership in the rollout of the Full Service Community School Initiative. Through partnerships with corporations and individual donors, we were able to raise another $75,000 to support the welding department, the fab lab, and STEM professional development for our teachers. None of this work would be possible without our funding partners, the Hellman Foundation, Cal Foundation, Chevron, Irina Scully Foundation, Kaiser, Lesher, San Francisco Foundation, Chamberlain, and the City of Richmond and the City of San Pablo. Next slide. As Shakira shared, perhaps one of our biggest contributions to the district is the Ed Fund's role as a fiscal sponsorship organization. As she mentioned, we have, we have over 50 individuals and organizations working in our schools that work through the Ed Fund. We help coordinate contracting, back office support, payroll, insurance, a whole host of things that enables people to work in our schools. Um, you know, 
just five years, we had just a handful of organizations working through the Ed Fund. And like I just mentioned, now we have over 50. Um, and that is a total of you know, $4.6 million uh, in programming going to our students. Uh, I'm going to turn it back to Shakira, who's going to share some of those uh, projects with you. In a minute. There you go. So as you saw on the slide that Robert was discussing, that was a picture from Rob Skate Academy. We also work with the West Coast Chess Alliance. Um, many of you in our community should be familiar with TC Ball, also known as the Black Knight. Um, students and families have really greatly benefited from his chess instruction and also the exposure for many students who might not have otherwise been given the opportunity to participate in, in learning to play chess. And also West County Reads, which was founded in, 20, in 2001, but now runs the Book Depot at Stege Elementary School, which provides free books to any professionals working with kids. She also gives, um, gives books for free to children and families at various, or various um, events throughout the school district. And so those are just three. If you check out our annual report um, or scan the QR code, you can also see highlights from our many other fiscal projects. Next slide, please. One of the other things we do in terms of our um, our specific programming is we give scholarships. And since 2005, Ed Fund has awarded almost $2 million in scholarships to over 570 students in the school district. We manage five scholarships, which are all donor funded. The McKenna Poulet Scholarship, which is for Greenwood Academy students. The Schroeder Scholarship, which is for El Cerrito High School. Our African-American scholarships, which are for students district-wide. Um, for Gario, which is Richmond High School only. And then the Contra Costa Corral Scholarships, which are district-wide. Our scholarship applications will be open in the next few weeks, so please keep an eye out for those. And one of our favorite projects for the last 35 years, the Ed Fund has recognized the outstanding contributions of teachers in our district through the Teaching Excellence Awards. And we will be announcing the winners of those awards for this year next week. It is one of the highlights of our years. And lastly, one of the cornerstones of our programming is for the past nine years, we've partnered with the city of Richmond to run Camp Achieve. And we also supported three additional programs last summer um, at Nystrom, at King, and at Verdi for, to help pre prevent summer learning loss. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, you know, when I joined the Ed Fund in 2010, the Ed Fund's budget was just $250,000. So when I look at the financials now, I'm blown away by the scope and impact of the organization, how far we've come, how much we've grown. Um, and I also just want to highlight that all of that work is done by a very small team with just under $600,000 in staffing um, and expenses. We contributed nearly $6 million to the district last year. Uh, and some of the highlights that you see there, $705,000 in foundation grants secured to support WCC USD initiatives, $4.6 million to support our fiscally sponsored organizations, $147,000 to support our grant making uh, direct grants from the Ed Fund to our students and schools. Uh, that included, like Shakira said, the Bradley Arts grants, back to school grants, Black History grants, and our scholarships. Next slide. So again, we thank you for the opportunity to present tonight and share a little bit about the great work of the Ed Fund. I hope you all take some time to get to know our work a little more through our newsletter and our social media feeds um, or reach out to us directly. Uh, we look forward to getting to know you more and I, we look forward to you getting to know us more. Um, and since there's no questions, uh, we hope you have a good night and we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much for the report. We really appreciate it. Thank you Thank for you everything for having us to support Thank the district. You. Board, we are moving on to B8 standing reports. We have standing reports from MDAC and ASTU. MDAC, if you would like to come forward for your standing report.
President Smith-Foltz, I believe that um, the one of the co-chairs for our MDAC is online. Thank you so much. Are they able to be unmuted? There it is. I see her. Erica. Uh -huh. Hola, muy buenas tardes. No sé si me logran escuchar. Y las personas que están ahí presentes, si pueden tener la traducción. Sí, ¿Me escucha? La mesa directiva tiene traductores. <ríe> ok, bueno, primero muy buenas tardes. Este... Me iba a dirigir ahorita en este momento para allá con ustedes. Uh, primero, muy buenas, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Erika Cruces. Tengo dos hijos, en la, um, uno en sexto y uno ya es senior. Este, estamos aquí como representantes junto con mi compañera Estafale. Y no sé si ahorita está ahí. Este, ella, ella va también a dar un poco más de reporte. Y algo rápido que les quería comentar, este, ahorita estoy abriendo mi, mi información, les pido una disculpa, pero bueno, eh, lo que les quería comentar es lo siguiente, es que antes de empezar, este, me gustaría disculparme porque, por no estar presente ahí, ¿verdad? Para ofrecer mis recomendaciones como oficial de MDAC. Por el motivo, eh, les voy a comentar el primer punto, es pedirles que verifiquen a todas las instalaciones educativas que no debiéramos tener dos eventos este, al mismo tiempo. Cuando hay juntas del distrito, en un espacio de comentarios públicos, en nuestro distrito escolar. Ya que ahora, bueno, acabo de salir de hecho de las instalaciones del Cerrito High, porque hoy, hoy se realizó el um, Back to School Night, y también es un, un evento de suma importancia para mi hija porque dieron un taller de apoyo para FAFSA. So, uh, en, este momento, en este momento nos encontramos así. Así que y se realizan eventos cuando ahora nos encontramos en un apoyo y un soporte para nuestros aprendices de inglés. Nuestras voces tienen que ser escuchadas. Tienen que escuchar todas las necesidades que tienen en nuestro distrito distrito y no deberían empalmar actividades de información, talleres, espacios de comentarios públicos para nosotros los padres. Entonces, le, le cedo la palabra a Stephanie Sequeria, que tiene más datos y más información, pero básicamente este, queremos darle toda esta información, pero más que nada para el apoyo para todos nuestros aprendices de ENDA y a, a todas las instancias que existen como el ELMA. Stephanie, ¿pudieran dar uh, el enlace a Stephanie Sequeira? She's been promoted. ¿Sí me escuchan? Sí, ya te escuchamos. Steph, mm -hmm. we time back to roll their time back because we were waiting for Stephanie. Thank you. Am I good to go now? Yes. Okay. So good evening, board members. We just wanted to provide feedback from our last MDAC meeting and provide a quick update. Um, we got a few updated information from our Elma department and wanted to provide that information to you prior to cuts being made. Uh, we were understanding and looking at English only students. There's about 12,847. Our ELLs, there's about 7,915. Those that have been recently reclassified as fluent English, but we are still required to monitor for four years. There are 1,692 students and those that have reclassified and we don't know, we no longer need to be monitoring them are 2,039. So these are currently about 9,607 students that are considered ELLs or RFL district. It is our hope as MDAC that budget cuts will not affect the Elma department. 
that there is a tremendous amount of active work needed to be done to support the students. We know very well that this is not an easy task and that it can be done in a it can't be done in a blink of an eye. Data and numbers of students should be a factor prior to cuts being finalized. The needs of our students and how there is minimal to no disruption to their academic success should be taken into consideration. We want to remind everyone that all schools with 21 or more English language learner students are legally required to have an active ELAC committee and parent membership should be proportional to the percentage of the amount of the EL students that currently that the school currently has. Hoping you all can have our superintendent have their EDs hold principals accountable or principals can accountable to themselves. To date, out of the 52 schools, schools legally required to have an active ELAC, 33 have, have stated that they have an active ELAC formed in the district. 10 are still in the process of being formed. We're not sure as to what process that may be, knowing that we're in February and SSC and mm -hmm. budgets need to be, discussions need to start happening within the schools itself. And seven that have not responded and we don't have any clue about where they stand. And two that did not respond at all whatsoever. So if we can bring these discussions to make sure that the, someone is holding our site accountable. Um, I'll follow up with providing the data that states the number of students that are in uh, as a whole at the school sites, number of students that are considered EL and the percentage of what that we consist of, which should entail like how many parents we might need at, a, uh, at an ELAC committee, which at very must at School sites could be just a one to two parents uh, meeting to discuss what are the needs to then provide recommendations at our SSC level. Thank you. Thank you so much, MDAC. We're now ready for the next standing committee. I'm sorry, the next standing report, not standing committee, next standing report. Miss Pursley, there's a little button that you push with a person's face on it. See it? Hey, can you hear me now? I can. Hold on one second till we get your timer up for me, please. Yeah, okay, thanks. Sorry, you're good. Okay. Good evening, board. My name is Kristen Kersley. I'm the president of the Adult School Teachers United. Thank you for this opportunity to make a report. I would like to start by thanking you for funding the Adult School Older Adults Program for this year and last year. Thank you for recognizing that educational opportunities are central to the health and well being of older adults. The state of California is also beginning to realize how important it is to serve the state's fastest growing population. The state now has a master plan for aging and the counties are looking for ways to implement it. Contra Costa County has already identified the adult school, older adults programs as an excellent resource and has awarded them some money with opportunities for more. We ask for your support as we continue our efforts to put our older adults programs on a solid financial footing. And we also ask you to spread the word about the importance of educational opportunities for seniors. You have shown that you understand. Please advocate for us however you can. As you have the vision to see that elders who many in government have found it easy to discount belong in the education family, we hope that you will have the same vision for the adult school as a whole. There is a rueful joke that goes around in adult education circles. We are the red-haired stepchild of education. Unfortunately, here at West Contra Costa, our stalled and endlessly contentious negotiations deepen our feeling of being unwanted outcasts. After five years of negotiations, we still don't have our first contract. We have urgent issues to resolve. We haven't had a raise in four years. Our starting pay is $12 lower than the lowest starting pay of adult school teachers in nearby districts like Durf, Berkeley and Oakland. We need a contract that provides the protections that other teachers have, academic freedom, safety, a fair process around discipline. Instead, we have an unending battle on constantly shifting ground. As a member of the negotiating committee, I go to the bargaining table every session with the sense that nothing will happen. 
after making slow but good pro progress between 2019 and 2021, we have not reached a single agreement in two years. By June 30 of 2021, we had reached agreements with the district on 30 out of 35 proposed articles we sunshined in 2019. But in July of 2022, district negotiators presented us with extensive changes they wanted to the agreements and started saying that we had no agreements with the district at all. District negotiators also began endlessly questioning who we can represent. They asserted incorrectly that we could not represent our teachers who are members of UTR and teach for the adult school at night. That held up negotiations for 10 months. After they had to rescind that claim, they started insisting that we only represent teachers in the fee-based classes. Recently, they asserted that we can't represent part-time teachers, even though almost all adult school teachers are part-time. UTR and Teamsters represent part-timers. Why wouldn't we be able to? This constant harassment, gaslighting, and moving of the goalposts has a subtext that adult school teachers don't deserve a union, but all other adult school employees, administrators, classified staff, and school supervisors are unionized. They get raises when their union gets a raise. They have salaries, paid vacations, and health care. We have hourly pay, unpaid furloughs when there's a break, and no health care. We are glad they have the protections they have. But without our work, their work would not be necessary. We deserve at least the equity of having a contract. Please direct district negotiators to bargain in good faith with us and get our contract done. This does not mean them telling us to hurry up and capitulate because the board wants a contract done. Please direct them to stop trying to figure out how to exclude members from our bargaining unit. Stop complaining that our proposed language is too much like UTRs and yet somehow also to unlike it. Please direct them to honor the 30 articles. Give us written counter proposals if necessary on the articles that remain so that we can reach a clear agreement and negotiate a fair raise. Thank you. Thank you so much to our standing reports. Board, we're now moving on to B9 agenda review and adoption. Dr. Hurst, would you like to make a comment before we go to agenda review and adoption? Absolutely, ma'am. We would like to pull uh, two items, please, and that will be item F1, F2, and we would like to ask the board if we could bring those two items back at our next meeting. It's due to time. Thank you so much. Board, if there's no objection to uh, Tressie Phillips. Is it possible for us to leave those items on for discussion purposes? Because I do have some things that I would like to share in the group. And it may or may not be helpful um, when it comes back. Let me make sure I understand. Is it both F1 and F2, or is it just one of those that you would like to move up to discussion? And I should have, F1 and F2 are the the layoffs. I'm sorry, they are the discussion items. So F1 and F2, F1 is special education curricular presentation, and F2 is the chronic absenteeism presentation. I'm sorry, I think I was talking about E1. Okay, and E2. yeah, E1, and they're, they're there. Okay. Yeah. So board, with the superintendent's guidance, do we have any objection to adopting the agenda while removing F1 and F2 to be brought back on February the 14th? Are there any objections? Seeing none, the agenda passed with those uh, edits. Thank you so much, board. We're now moving to approval. We're at B10, approval of the minutes January 10th and January 24th. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yes, Clerk Gonzalez. -Hoy. Thank you. Um, the minutes for January, uh, the roles of president and clerk um, are incorrect for both set of minutes. Um, That's my only change. Thank you. Thank you so much. Trustee Reckler. 
Yes, on January 10th, I have a very small correction on B5. Um, there's a sentence that says the approval of proceeding with the RID, RID of mandate. It should be RIT, WRIT of mandate filings, and I'll send that in should it be approved. Thank you so much. Board, any other? Do we see any other corrections? Okay, can we approve the minutes with those two corrections? Being no objection? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to ask, so to clarify, our next meeting is February 14th, not the 21st? Yes, ma'am. So our next meeting is, because February is a short month, our next meeting is going to be on the 14th and not on the 21st. And, and because of the school break, there's a break in there. So you guys are not in school starting on the 19th, I believe. So we moved it up. And then will we also be meeting on the 28th? No. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Board, are there any other questions or no? Without objection, we're going to adopt the minutes with those two corrections that were previously stated by Clerk Gonzalez Hoy and Trustee Reckler. So adopted. We are now moving to B11, resolution number 2324 52, honoring African American History Month 2023. Nope, that should be 2024, 2024. So on the agenda, it says honoring African-American History Month 2023. We need to change that to 2024. And Ms. Forrest, I believe this is your item. Yes, uh, good evening, board president, uh, trustees and superintendent Hurst. Whereas the West Contra Costa Unified School District Board of Education recognizes the need to educate on and work against the systems of oppression, racism, prejudice, dehumanization, lack of basic human rights, and violence against, Af against African Americans that are still prevalent in today's society. And whereas the history social science framework of California public schools, kindergarten through grade 12, states that the history curriculum of community, state, region, nation, and world must reflect experiences of men and women and of different racial, religious, and ethnic groups throughout the K-12 educational program. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education and the West Contra Costa Unified School District Board of Education acknowledges the month of February 2024 as African American History Month and encourages all educational communities to commemorate this occasion with appropriate instructional activities. Be it therefore resolved, be it further resolved, excuse me, that the West Contra Costa Unified School District and its schools will display the Pan-African flag during the month of February 2024, consistent with the district's policy and administrative regulation. Thank you so very much. Board, do I have a motion? Uh, Trustee Phillips? Uh, I move the resolution. Thank you, and I remember... Uh, our parliamentarian, you move the resolution number 2324-52? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Board, are there any comments? Go ahead, Clerk Gonzalez-Hoy. Thank you, President smith -Bowles. Um, I just wanted to appreciate um, a few people um, this month. I wanted to appreciate you, President smith -Bowles, Trustee Christian, Trustee Phillips, um, and majority of our cabinet, uh, because I think that it's a big deal that our governing board and our cabinet is mostly people of color, especially African-American uh, uh, individuals. Uh, and that's something that I feel I'm very proud of. And I'm thankful for every single one of your leaderships uh, for being here, because I can't relate to what you have experienced in your lives but I know that our system sometimes pushes against individuals that look like all of you um, so that you are in your position. I think it's a huge deal. Um, and I wanted to just say that out loud and I appreciate you all uh, as an ally. Um, so thank you. And uh, this month I celebrate all of you, our administrators, our teachers and our classified staff and students who 
um, are Black, African American. Thank you. Thank you so much, Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. Anyone else? Let's go with Trustee Christian and then Trustee Phillips, please. Go ahead, Trustee Christian. Uh, yes, thank you. Appreciate it, um, Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. Appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, this month here, you know, we celebrate African American heritage, you know, from slavery to Reconstruction to Jim Crow laws to the civil rights movement and to where we are today. We stand on great shoulders who have fought dil diligently and hard throughout history. And we stand on the shoulders of all those who paid the way for us today. And there's so much to be grateful and thankful for because they, they shed their tears and they shed it. They gave themselves up. They sacrificed themselves to fight for freedom. And so as we celebrate uh, African American um, History Month, uh, Black History Month, we, we celebrate all those, and even to the present of this day. And um, hopefully I can work on getting Martin Luther King great niece out here uh, to California. And she, I spoke to her recently and she's looking forward. So, um, and I'm connected to the King family. So I, I appreciate that too. So, um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trustee Christian. Trustee Phillips. Thank you very much for the resolution. Uh, Mr. Clerk, thank you uh, for your words. Um, I think that when we come into months uh, like this one um, and other um, months that support uh, other uh, ethnic communities. Um, I think it's important to do things, right? I think it's important to, to act uh, when we can. Um, I wanna take this opportunity to bring up two things um, that I think are very fitting. Um, I think one that we should revisit the conversation about uh, an ethnic studies program uh, in our district, not just uh, for African-American students, uh, but for other students in our district as well. Uh, because I think students do better when they know about themselves and when they feel better about themselves. So I think we should revisit that uh, as soon as possible. Um, and then the other thing is I heard uh, a, uh, what I think is a good idea. I know when I came in, um, people probably thought I wasn't listening, but I have my computer in the back and I was listening. And I believe that I heard Zalon Harrison talk about a language school, an African language school. I think she said Swahili. Um, I want to say that I think the Mandarin school has been a great success. I think that we have a model um, a very good model for language schools in this district. Um, and I support uh, an African language school uh, wholeheartedly. And I hope other board members will uh, as well. Um, we have an opportunity to, when we have an opportunity to do, um, I think we should. Um, and I think that's the way that we celebrate best uh, these kinds of months. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trustee Phillips. Any other comments from the board? I would just like to say thank you for the resolution. I also want to say that African-American history is American history. It should be celebrated every single month. It should be taught every single month. It should be honored every single month. I also want to say that a lot of people love to talk about Martin Luther King because he's palatable. But I want to read a quote about my Martin Luther King. My Martin Luther King said, the Negro's great stumbling block is in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizens counselor, not the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice. When you listen to and read about our African-American figures, make sure you take them in totality, not just what's palatable and not just what history has deemed to be digestible. Martin Luther King was an advocate. He was a staunch fighter for freedom in all ways. And just to remember him as a pacifist is to do him an injustice, not a justice. Thank you, everyone. I'm complete. We are now moving to consent items. Board, are there any- President Smithville, sorry, we have to vote on the resolution. 
I'm a hot mess. Thank you, friend. Um, we are now going to go towards the vote. We are voting on the resolution. We are starting with our student trustees, student trustee Pal Carr. What's your vote, ma'am? Yes. Thank you. Student trustee Abdu Ga Parvaro. What's your vote, ma'am? Yes. Thank you. Did I get it right? No. Um, the first part you get right, but it's you... always the ending part. Yeah. So Abdu Ga Parvaro. Road. Yeah. Okay. Abdu Ga Par Road. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your vote. Trustee Phillips. Yes. Trustee Christian. Yes. Thank you. Trustee Reckler. Reckler, yes. Thank you. Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. Yes. And I'm a yes. Thank you, everyone. Now, board, we are moving to consent items. Does anyone have a consent item that they need to pull? Trustee Reckler. Yes, thank you. I'd like to pull C4, ratification of negotiated non-bond change orders and C6 contracts thank for, you. for discussion. Thank you. Any, uh, Trustee Phillips? I wanted to pull a contract, but is Trustee Rackler pulling all of them? She's pulling all of them. Okay. okay. Anyone else? Board, can I get a motion to approve the consent item with a pull of C4 and C6? I move for approval. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Board to the vote. Trustee uh, Powell Carr? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Abdu Gapar Rove? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Phillips? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Christian? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Reckler? Reckler, yes. Thank you. Clerk Gonzalez Hoy? Yes. Thank you, and I'm a yes. Thank you, board. We're now moving to D, superintendent communication. Dr. Hurst, this is your item. Thank you so much. Can we pull up the presentation, please? And if we can go to immediately the second slide. We do have a memoriam. The district would like to take the time to recognize the contributions of members of our school community who passed away. I regret to inform you that former Richmond Mayor Irma Anderson passed away. Mayor Anderson was a remarkable leader and her commitment to serving the Richmond community will always be remembered. Her tireless efforts to improve the lives of those around her are a testament to her dedication and passion for public service. Our thoughts and prayers go to the family and friends during this difficult time. Please join us in a moment of silence. Thank you. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank um, Ms. Karina Ponce for your patience and I invited her here as part of National School Counseling Week, and we wanted her to um, share what our counselors do across the district and the role of the counselors. So we're going to invite Karina up and have her speak for the remainder of the superintendent presentation. Thank you for your patience, Ms. Ponce. Thank you so much for the invitation, superintendent, and thank you, board. Um, for having me here tonight. Um, I really want to take this time to appreciate our counselors. It's National Counseling Week. As you know, I've been very vocal over the last few years about counselors. Um, and now in this role as lead counselor, I'm very proud to present our counselors that you see up on the screen. Some of them you may not, you may know, some of them you may not. So I really wanna encourage you to go out to our sites, visit our counselors and see all the work that they are doing. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. So as the superintendent mentioned, this National Counselors Week, we really want to take um, this week to recognize the extraordinary work that they are doing, the service that they are helping, not just our students, um, also our staff, our school community. They collaborate amongst each other um, and they collaborate with other departments. 
Next slide, please. Um, so here is a job description that we have for our counselors that was passed not too long ago. And I just want to put it up there to really emphasize that our school counselors are not just our traditional, what we used to see as guidance counselors. Our school counselors are working as mental health providers. They're working under the multi-tiered multi systems of support. And their number one thing is really to be 80% facing with students. And that's really, really their ultimate goal. Um, next slide, please. And so as I have mentioned, we went from guidance counselor to school counselor. What does that mean? That means we're actually serving every single student, no matter where they're coming from, no matter um, their educational plan, because we know every single student has a different plan. We are working with every single student to make sure that they all get served. Next slide, please. And so where are we? And this is really the slide that I, I want you to focus on. How many counselors do we have in total? We have 40 counselors, we know that, but we're all spread apart. We have nine in middle school, two in K through um, eight. We have 21 in high school, and then we have nine um, college and career counselors. Next slide, please. And so taking in those numbers, we have our school counselors that are serving 10,801 students. We have nine college and career counselors that are serving 7,406 7, high school students. Just take a moment to take in those numbers of how many students we're serving and how many counselors we have. And so the next slide, please. Data-driven, I really just wanna show with share with you that our counselors are really using data to be informed. This year, we were able to send 14 counselors to CASC, um, thanks to Ms. Jessica Petrelli's A through G grant. She's the coordinator. Um, and our counselors really dove into data and really learning how to use it. And we brought it back to the counseling meeting. We started diving into data. This is from School Links, one of the platforms that we use. This is our senior survey, just as a sample of what we use to inform us, what do we need to work on more as counselors to be able to serve our students? Next slide, please. And then we also look at our graduation rates. That's really important for us. And we look at our A through G rate. As you could see, our graduation has maintained steady, but our A through G rates have went up. They're actually higher than they were pre-pandemic. And this is something that's really um, showing of the work that they're doing right now when we're meeting in our A through G meetings with Jessica Petrelli, and she's coming and meeting with counselors one-on-one -on -one at sites to go over how to look at your data, how to use it, um, and making sure that we're serving our students. Next slide, please. So this is a breakdown of the domains that we work on. So like I said, our counselors are different than um, when maybe many of us went to school when we had guidance counselors. Now our school counselors are working under academic, social emotional, and college and career. Um, and so under academic, which is what we know, they're making sure our students are graduating, um, they're doing classroom presentations, but then we have the social emotional component that really isn't spoken about. I have counselors right now in the district that are running groups. They're doing one-on-one -on -one check ins with students. They're working with our at-risk population and having those meetings with parents. Um, and they're really making sure that they're serving the students' mental health well-being and that they're their main advocate. Um, along with that, all of our counselors, um, for the first time, actually they all received training for um, being able to do suicide assessments. Our counselors hadn't received that all as a group, but for the very first time we were able to do that. Um, next slide, please. And this is an, a highlight of what they're doing right now, what they're currently doing. 
We have a new FAFSA that was just rolled out. All of our counselors um, at one of our last meetings, they were all trained on line by line items. So every single site runs a cash for college night and they do it in the evenings. Right now, El Cerrito is running theirs. It's from 6 to 8.30. Um, tomorrow, it'll be at Kennedy. Um, from 5 to 7.30. So every night during this, um, the next few months, at least one night a week, there is a high school that has a cash for college night and it's open to all of our WCC students. So it's not just if you go to Kennedy, you can go. If you couldn't make the Kennedy one, the next week there's another one available. I mean, that's really our focus along with college applications right now for high schools. And then there are events going on at middle school and high school. They're still doing college and career fairs um, among everything else that they're doing. Next slide, please. Um, so I wanted to throw in some pictures to give you a visual of what our counselors are doing. We're doing college and career events. Here are some college and career events um, from Richmond High School. Um, one of the pictures is Ms. Jan in red. She is actually our veteran counselor. She's been here for more than 20 years. And she is really the one that um, I even go to for support. I send um, new counselors to her, new college and career counselors, because she has an ex excellent model um, at her site. Um, next slide, please. Um, and then here are some more pictures. These are um, some pictures from De Anza to give you an example of our counselors doing class choice sheets and presentation at the middle school sites because they also do that from high school to middle. Um, and then going to college trips and doing a college and career fair. De Anza actually had one of their biggest college and career fairs they've had to date. They had 50 to no, 58 tables full of colleges and careers for the kids to explore. Next slide, please. Um, and then I also want to really emphasize our professional development. We've really um, taken the time to survey our own counselors to ask them, what do you need? Um, and a lot of them said, we need more professional development. We need more conferences. We need to be able to learn about the latest in counseling. Um, and so along with sending counselors to CASC, our counselors also um, go to the UC conferences, the CSU conferences, to learn about the latest in the applications and admissions for our students. Um, this Friday, uh, four counselors and myself will be going to the NorCal CAS conference um, to learn more about the latest in social emotional well being in the counseling world. Um, and um, you can see our middle school counselors on the side. Our middle school counselors are really working on the MTSS framework. Um, next slide, please. Um, so this is a sample of the MTSS framework that we're using. This is ASCA approved. Um, and so we're working under um, the three domains that I had mentioned, academic, social, emotional, and college and career. Um, so our middle school is really looking at using the framework to work under an anti-racist lens. That's really our framework. We're looking at articles, we're reading them, um, and we're making sure we're well informed so that when we set up our framework, we are working under, under that lens. Next slide, please. Um, so middle school, I really wanna shout them out too because I know usually when we think of school counselors, we think of high school, but our middle school counselors are really working um, to make sure they bring early college access to our middle school students and get them thinking about taking college classes during the summer. What do you wanna do when you grow up? Um, all of those questions that we really wanna make sure our students start thinking about um, and really start getting them curious about um, the many possibilities that they have. Next slide, please. Um, and so I really wanna thank you for your time. Um, these are our counselors. Not only do we have our counselors, but we have two interns. 
and we have a few um, in the wings that want to come over to WCC, so we're really excited. Um, we did a tabling at St. Mary's, and we have a few that want to come over to us for next year. So we really want to expand having more interns. Um, so thank you so much, and I really want to thank our counselors. Thank you for all of the work that you are doing. You are not... Um, going unseen, we all see it. Um, and now hopefully you'll have some visitors coming to see the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ponce. And this concludes our superintendent report. Thank you. Thank you, board. We are going to take questions. If anybody has questions, we're gonna do three questions. Anyone have questions? Seeing none, thank you so much. Thank you again for the superintendent report. Thank you, um, lead counselor Ponce. Thank you so much for the report. We are now moving on to E action items. We are on E1 student discipline. Director Fleischman, this is your item. Thank you, board president. Um, we brought forth a um, recommendation for a stipulated uh, expulsion. Um, based on agreement between uh, district and parent uh, after a disciplinary incident at uh, high school. Brought forth to the board for a uh, vote of approval. Thank you so much. Is there any public comment? Yes, our first public comment is Kate Burkhart. And just Please let everybody yourself. know there's one minute for public comment. Please unmute yourself, Ms. Burkhart. Our next public comment is Zoom user. Please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Board, can I get a, oh, sorry, board, are there any questions? Yes. Go well, ahead. Can you elaborate on this case, please? Um, actually, for confidentiality reasons, I cannot. So, do we just approve the expulsion without, like, knowing anything? President Smith Bowles, maybe what we can explain to our trust student trustees. Uh, for expulsions, mm -hmm. these are closed session items. Um, and because we're not allowed to discuss them in public, but we have to vote on them in public, um, you both are uh, could abstain if you would like, because you're not part of the conversation. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for that explanation, Clerk gonzalez -Hoy. Board, can I get a motion? President Smith will send make a motion that we approve the stipulated expulsion agreement between the parties. I'll second that. Board, any comments? Trustee Reckler, go ahead. I just want to include the case number, which is 232402. Thank you for that. I, I also don't think it was seconded. Uh, I Unless that's it. a second. I did. Oh, you did. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, did. President. That's okay. <laughs> Board, any comments? No? Let's go straight to the vote then. Trustee uh, Paul Carr? I abstain. Thank you. Trustee Abdugah Parr Rowe? Abstain. Thank you. Trustee Phillips? I abstain. Thank you. Trustee Christian? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Reckler? Reckler, yes. Thank you. Clerk Gonzalez Hoy? Yes. Thank you. And I'm a yes. Board, we're now moving to E2. 
Uh, Mr. Freeze, I believe this is your item. Yes, it is. Thank you, President Smith Folds, uh, Superintendent Hurst, and the board. Tonight, we're asking the board to adopt resolution 2324 47, authorizing the design, build, procurement, and construction for the Steeds Elementary School modernization project pursuant to Education Code 1725.10. Pursuant to the California Education Code 17250.10, design, design build statute, the district may utilize the design build method of project delivery using either a low bid or best value procurement methodology. For, part, for projects that have, that have an estimated construction of at least a million dollars, district staff has examined the possible construction delivery methods for the Stage Elementary School Modernization Project and, and concluded that the use of design build delivery method for the project offers the following potential advantages to the district not available under other delivery methods. One, reduce change orders and claims. Because the designer and the builder are part of the same design build entity, the district is not the guarantor of the completeness or accuracy of the design documents and thus, and thus the district may avoid conflicts and disputes as well as the corresponding costs these conflicts and disputes that may arise between the architect, engineer, and construction contractor in the, in the traditional design, bid, build, procurement. Two, efficient and less costly construction. The contractor is, invo is involved in the design early in the process and thus can provide helpful insights on construction materials and methods and can make the project's design more efficient and less costly to construct. Three, on-time completion, because the design work and the construction work overlap to the, to the certain extent in the design build process, the project may be completed faster than the design bid build procurement method. And four, qualified and complete, qualified and competitive firms. The pre-qualification process required by the design build statute will lead to a qualified and experienced pool of design build firms to make a selection from an award to the project. Additionally, because the project's construction cost is estimated to be more than $30 million, the project meets the monetary threshold for using the design build statute. We're recommending that the board adopt resolution 2324-47, authorizing the design build procurement and construction for Steve's Elementary School pursuant to education code 17250.10. Thank you so much, Director Freeze. Board, are there any questions? Nope, sorry. Are there any public comments? Yes, we have one public comment. Kate Burkhart, please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. That completes public comment. Thank you, board. Do we have any questions? Seeing no questions, is there a motion? Make a motion, President Smithfolds. Uh, I move that we adopt resolution number 2324-47, authorizing the design, build, procurement, and construction of the Steach Elementary School modernization project pursuant to education code section 17250.10. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Thank you, are there any comments? Trustee Phillips, go ahead. Just that this is a very long time coming, um, and it is a good thing that we are moving forward. I know that uh, these last few bills that we're going to do with Measure R um, are not exactly, or maybe not even close to what everybody wanted, um, but it is important that we're able to do something um, that people can take pride in. So I'm glad the board is doing this. Thank you so much, Trustee Phillips. Anyone else have comments? Seeing none, we are moving to the vote. Trustee Paul Carr? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Abdugab Parro? Yes. Thank you, Trustee Phillips? Yes. Thank you, Trustee Christian? Yes. Thank you, Trustee Reckler? Reckler, yes. Thank you, Clerk Gonzalez Hoy? Yes. Thank you, and I'm a yes. Director Freeze, we are moving to E3, Acceptance of Contra Costa County Office of Education Annual Report for Williams Settlement Litigation. Sir, this is your item. 
Yes, thank you very much. So we are asking the board tonight to accept the Contra Costa County Office of Education annual report for William Sediment litigation. As part of the compliance requirements for the William Sediment litigation, the Contra Costa County Office of Education has submitted its annual report for the fiscal year 23-24. This report presents the results of the school site visits within the first four weeks of school. Instructional materials, there was sufficient District adopted standards, aligned textbooks and instructional materials visible and or documented in the classrooms visited. Where applicable, there were sufficient access to internet connections and instruction devices. A plan developed by the LEA to assist access to the device and the internet for all students was filed with the county office. School facilities. There were no facility conditions that pose emergency threat or urgent threat to the health or safety of pupils or staff. School accountability school accountability report card. The school SARC accountability, accountability report reported the instrument, the instructional materials used in the school and the condition of the facilities. Uh, teacher misassignments, uh, miss, misassignments and teacher vacancies. Teachers monitoring reports are now completed through the new California State Assignment Accountab Accountability System set up by AB 1219 data regarding the miss alignments and vacancies from these reports shall be publicly available December of each year and uniform complaints. There were no complaints during this quarter. Charter schools are not subject to the uniform complaint policies and procedures. Thank you so much, Director Freeze. Are there any public comments? Our first public comment is Kate Burkhart. Please unmute yourself. That completes public comment. Thank you so much, staff. Board, are there any questions? Trustee Reckler, go ahead. Three questions, please. Yes, thank you. I, I have a question. I can't believe I have to ask this all the, uh, after all these years, but would you please be able to clarify the difference between this particular document that comes from uh, this, the county superintendent, which encapsulates the first four weeks of school, then there is another resolution that comes to the board no later than the eighth week of school about textbook sufficiency, and then once a quarter, Williams comes back again. And I have to tell you that after all this time, I'm actually confused by this. Can you clarify each of these Williams points in the calendar? I could try to do that. I, so the annual inspection that we're talking about tonight is done within the four weeks of schools where the county comes out and completes their inspections for textbooks and facilities. Um, we are required to report Williams complaints that are received by the district every quarter. So those complaints that are filed by parents or staff uh, or in that particular quarter that we report out. Once we report it to the board, that report goes to the county, they approve it, it comes back again to the board to approve, uh, recognizing that the county had reviewed it. Um, I cannot speak to the one about the textbooks coming back in the eighth week. Uh, possibly CAO uh, Johnson can answer that one. So we do the um, textbook review every year. It's an annual review. And what we do is just as the year goes on, we don't really come back to the board, but we just maintain to make sure that, you know, we're continuing to make sure that all our teachers have their supplies. Um, as you know, we continue to hire teachers. And so that's just something that we monitor in progress, but we do that process at the beginning of the school year. But that's part of Williams too, is that correct? Correct. So they so they come out in the beginning of the year, the first four weeks, and then it comes back again to the board no later than the eighth week. That's correct? So they we have the process where we actually go to certain schools and we look to make sure that all of the books that are on our state adopted list are present in our classrooms. 
then there is a textbook sufficiency forms that all of our teachers sign to say that they all they have all of their textbooks and supplies. And so that all happens at the beginning of the school year. As we hire teachers, we continue to monitor the progress, but it's more internal. But each year we do that process and we actually have to submit information to our county. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Trustee Reckler. Any more questions? No? Or can I get a motion? I move that we accept the Sorry, the uh, annual report for William Settlement Limited. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, board. Any comments? Trustee Reckler, go ahead. I just want to state it's for the 23-24 year. Let me just make sure. Uh, Director Freeze is 23-24? That is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Reckler. Any other comments? Nope, to the vote. Trustee Pal Carr? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Abduga Parv Ro? Abstain. Thank you. Trustee Phillips? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Christian? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Rackler? Rackler, yes. Thank you. Trustee, sorry, Clark Gonzalez Hoy? Yes. Thank you. And I abstain. Thank you so much, board. We are now moving to E4, Education Code 44258.3, Variable Term Ravers. Dr. Johnson, this is your item. Good evening, President Smith, Folds, excuse me, and board members. Um, Ed Code 44258.3 allows the governing board of a school district to authorize the holder of credentials in the following areas. Multiple subject, standard elementary, single subject, and standard secondary, with consent to teach departmental classes in grades K-12, provided the teacher has adequate knowledge of the subject matter. We're bringing to you nine teachers for this waiver. Thank you so much, Dr. Johnson. Are there any public comment? Ms. Kate Burhart, please unmute yourself. No more public comment. Thank you so much. Board, do we have any questions? Seeing none, uh, may I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the variable term waivers. Thank you. Is there a second? Oh, Reckler will second. Thank you. Board, are there any comments? Seeing none, we're moving to the vote to approve Education Code 44258.3, variable term waivers. Uh, Trustee Pal Carr? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Abdu Gab Parvo? Epstein. Thank you, Trustee Phillips. Yes. Thank you, Trustee Christian. Yes. Thank you, Trustee uh, Reckler. Reckler, yes. Thank you, Clerk Gonzalez-Hoy. Yes. Thank you, and I'm a yes. We are now moving on to E5, resolution number 2324-4A, exemption for retired CalSTRS member returning back to work. Dr. Johnson, this is your item. Yes, thank you. This resolution is a separation form service requirement exemption. It is a request for the listed retired school psychologist to supply emergency services and or be a substitute for our school district. Thank you, staff. Are there any public comments? No public comment at the moment. Thank you. Board, are there any questions? Seeing none, may I have a motion? 
I move resolution number 2324-48, exemption for retired CalSTRS member returning uh, back to work. Thank you. Is there second. a second? Second. Thank you, Trustee Christian. Board, we are, uh, any board comments? Seeing no comments, we're going straight to the vote. Trustee Palkar? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Abduga Parvar. Par Ro Ro Abstain. Okay. Trustee Chris, I'm sorry, Trustee Phillips? Yes. Trustee Christian? Yes. Trustee Reckler? Reckler, yes. Clerk Gonzalez Hoy? Yes. And I'm a yes. Thank you. We are now moving to resolution number, we're moving to E6, resolution number 2324-50, reduction or discontinuance of certificated particular kinds of service. Dr. Johnson, this is your item. Yes, thank you again. This resolution focuses on the boards that, um, being determined that this layoff shall be based upon a reduction or elimination of particular kinds of services that are listed in the resolution. Thank you so much, staff. Do we have any public comment? Remember, public comment is one minute. Yes, we do. Our first public comment is Darlene Almeida. So good evening, Dr. Hurst, school board and cabinet members. My name is Darlene Almeida, a 30 year employee of this district and line item one out of four special education coordinators that you voted to remove as part of your need to cost cut. I wanted you to see the person that you're cutting and not just a name or position on a line item. My role as coordinator has been to oversee the 504 department, which is a federal law that is overseen by the Office of Civil Rights, designed to protect the rights of individuals with a disability that limits one or more major life activities. I oversee this program and support school sites with the implement, implementation of appropriate accommodations and modifications of students who need an equal playing field for one of their documented life comprom compromising needs. I understand that the special education department is purchasing the Beyond SST program that they feel will eliminate my position that is required by the Office of Civil Rights under Please the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. Who will support these students, their families, and school sites with what they need? A computer Please program is great for paperwork, comment. but no way supports or understands student needs. I oversee the district's deaf and hard of hearing and visually impaired programs. I am the only Please administrator com that can comment. directly communicate with both our deaf staff, parents, and students because of my knowledge of sign language. I have a teacher's voice. I understand the needs of these low incident students and their families since I have my own children. Salameda, thank you so much. I apologize, you're out of time, but we thank you for coming and speaking with us. We're gonna move to the next public comment. Thank, thank you. you so much. Next public comment is Jessica Ross. Please unmute yourself. To approve a fiscally sound reductions list, you need assurance that it's based on trends from the 23rd day of the school year when the district becomes obligated to provide contractual educator to student ratios. These data can be found in a simple power school search. I've done one. What you have been given is a list of reductions based on data from a low point of enrollment when the business office had to demonstrate its funding need to the state. Though using these numbers for both items is convenient, it is fundamentally incorrect, confuses supply with demand, and leads to a vast overestimation of possible UTR cuts represented in this recommendation tonight. Be the board tonight that stops its fiscally unstable cycle. Send this resolution back to the business office and ask them to rerun the data using the 23rd day. Also note that this resolution includes a 40% FTE counselor cut at Greenwood, leaving them with an undesirable 60% FTE. And even in that, if that position is filled, no counselor on site two days a week 
Is that what you want to make at Greenwood for the sake of $52,000 at our highest? Thank you so much for your comment. And our last public comment is Zoom user. Please unmute yourself. That concludes public comment. Thank you so much. Board, do we have, I'm sorry, board, do we have a motion? President Smith Bowles, I'll move resolution number 2324-50, reduction or discontinuation of certificated particular kinds of services. I'll second that. Board, any comments? Trustee Phillips, go ahead. Did we have questions or did that happen when I got up? You know what? I don't think we did have questions. Um, thank you for that. Let's roll it back board. We are gonna do three questions and three questions only, just one round. Trustee Phillips, do you have questions? I do. Go ahead, sir. Dr. Hurst, can you please explain the importance of the position of director of positive school climate. Thinking about this particular position, sir, um, this position holds probably six or seven responsibilities uh, from transfer, from enrollment to expulsions. Um, and several other responsibilities as well. So it's very significant to our district. However, I will share also in these conversations, uh, we have had to make some really tough decisions. But to answer your question, it is very important to our district. Thank you. Here's my second question. When you came to this district, I believe you filled the ED positions. Why did you do that? I'm thinking about um, the lack of accountability and that's that thinking about all of the principles they were not being adequately supervised. Um, I believe there was two or maybe three individuals uh, responsible for evaluating 56 principles and we needed accountability within our system. So I recommended to the board to bring on our executive directors. My final question, is can you talk to the board or describe to the board rather the importance of the school psychologist position? Yes, I think um, just as I shared with the director of school climate position. Uh, those school psychologists are important for meeting needs of our students, the social emotional well being. <clears throat> so, again, another difficult conversation, as all of them have been very difficult, another difficult conversation that we've had to have about school psychologists as well. Thank you. Board, are there any other questions? Seeing none, we are gonna move back to, we already motioned, it's been properly second. Now we're gonna to move to comments. Board, do we have comments? And they're gonna be a minute and a half comments, please, staff. Let's wait for the timer to come up. And board, any comments? Okay, Trustee Phillips, go ahead. Can I have my five seconds? You like that man at the store that keeps your penny. 
Thank you. So a few boards ago, there was a big push uh, to improve the climate in our district. Um, and it was a push that was meant to last through multiple boards because we've had some very serious climate issues in our district. And I think that removing the positive school climate director is a mistake. I also believe that removing the EDs are a mistake. Um, I seem to remember you saying that you brought the EDs back because you didn't think that the district could really function without those positions. And you just talked about how not having them meant that there wasn't accountability. So I don't know why we would, we would be removing positions that the superintendent does not believe that the district can function without. And then one position that I didn't say anything about, and I'm gonna close on this, is the speech therapist position. My son, one of my sons, I uh, received speech therapy services from the school district um, and he needs them and there are other children that need them as well. Um, I don't think this list is right. Thank you. Any other comments? Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. Thank you, President Smith Bolts. Thank you, staff, for all your work on this. Um, I think that we are in an impossible position. I think that tonight we heard a speaker at one point that was against something in this list, right? Um, and we we need more funding. We need more resources for our schools. We should be adding supports and staffing to our schools instead of taking away. We are like in an impossible position that I think we've all shared. We are losing sleep on. Um, and at the same time, having to make our budget solvent, um, which at this point, we don't have one time money, like we've talked about to fill the gap and push the problem forward, right, to reduce the impact. Um, so we have to have, we have to continue to have difficult conversations. The budget committee is going to continue to meet. I agree, Trustee Phillips, that the position of positive school climate is important. My hope is that through the contract budget committee, we can find reductions again and maybe bring back that position and or other priorities from that list that the board feels is necessary to return. Um, because I think that we all feel pretty strongly about certain positions. But like I mentioned, I think that we are in an impossible place that whatever we take off this list, we're gonna have to cut something else or someone else, right? So I think that we gotta keep that in mind in the next few months that even though we're making this approval now so we can start the process, uh, if we decide to cut something and bring a position, we're gonna have to figure out what to do about that. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Clerk gonzalez Hoy. Any other comments? Thank you both. Seeing none, we're gonna move on to the vote. Trustee Powell Carr. I abstain. Thank you. Trustee Abdu Ga Parvo. No. Thank you. Trustee Phillips. No. Thank you. Trustee Christian. No. Trustee Reckler. Reckler, yes. Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. Gonzalez Hoy, yes. And I'm a yes. Thank you, board. That passes with three, two. We are now moving to resolution number 2324-49, reduction of particular kinds of classified services. Dr. Johnson, this is your item. Yes, thank you. This is a resolution for our, our classified services due to um, a lack of funds for the 24-25 school year pursuant to Ed Codes 45117 and 45308. Thank you. Staff, are there public comments? Yes, we have one public comment. Monica Nav, please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. That concludes public comment. 
Thank you so much. Board, three questions. Do we have anyone that has questions? Trustee Phillips, go ahead. Dr. Hurst, can you please describe what the importance of the African-American student coordinator is? That position assisted um, another individual that's in OASA to help support our African-American students across the district. However, I will share this, that there is a plan moving forward um, with another person within Ed Services, two individuals, as a matter of fact, that will continue to support our African-American students across the district. What's that plan? Specifically? Yes. So we have a director, um, Ms. Sanji Bell, that's going to continue to help support, along with our Darius McDonald, that's going to continue to support African-American students. They'll continue the plan that's in place with our critical schools across the district. So services will not... Um, be dropped. My third question is for probably Mr. Booker. What is, or can you please describe the importance of the campus safety positions? that are on this list. Good evening, board. The importance of the campus safety officers are vital at the secondary uh, level. Uh, they provide uh, all a uh, support for safety uh, on the campus. They also build relationships uh, with the students and assist the administration with uh, any uh, climate or and or uh, safety concern that the staff and our students have. Thank you, Mr. Booker. Um, Madam President, um, I know we're in question still, but if you could think about giving us uh, an additional 30 seconds uh, for comments, I would appreciate it. Thank you so much. I will think about that. So two minutes instead of a minute 30. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing no questions, can I get a motion? President Smith Falls, I'll move resolution number 2324-49, reduction of particular kinds of classified services. Thank you. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Board, we're going to move the comments. Who has comments? Just Trustee Phillips. Okay. Uh, can we get two minutes? If we could put two minutes on the clock. I'll just stop when it gets to 30 seconds. Um, Madam President, thank you very much for uh, accommodating me. 
with the additional time. I want to start by saying I fully understand that we need to make cuts. Um, and I have been talking about balancing our budget since I arrived on the board. But that was always under the assumption that I would be part of a discussion as to what the balancing looked like. I fully understand and appreciate the board um, and the superintendent and other staff members bringing in members of the community to get their feedback on what the district's budget looks like. But I am a duly elected board member and this came to me completely baked. Meaning there are some things on this list that I fundamentally philosophically disagree with. Like I'm not gonna go home and tell my son that I voted to cut the speech pathologist that he needs. But there was never a conversation among the full board as to what the final list would look like. So it's not that I don't believe that we need to make cuts, but I do not as an elected official believe that I should just have to vote for cuts because they were put in front of me. I believe I should have a say as to what those cuts look like and I haven't had a say. So I'm not gonna vote for this either. Just like I talked about school climbing earlier, we removed police from this district because we didn't think it was the best thing. Now we're gonna remove the school positive school climate person, director, and we're gonna cut safety too. What are we doing? I don't think these lists are right and that's why I'm gonna vote no again. Thank you for the time, additional time. I appreciate it. Board, does anyone else have comments? I have comments. Thank you so very much, everyone. Um, I think that we have to be very mindful of the next steps that we're taking. And we do that by continuing to have a transparent process. So there have been multiple times where we have come as a budget subcommittee, where we have come in closed session and we've had conversation that's appropriate that we're supposed to have. And we've had time to be able to ask questions and do the work of the board. This is not coming haphazardly. This is a struggle for every single person because everybody understands that this is, these are people. These are not just positions. These are people that have impact on everyday life in our district. There's also a clear understanding that if we don't make this move tonight, then we can't continue to have the hard conversations about prioritizing, about making sure that we are able to correctly move in a direction that's gonna keep us in local control. So what we're doing tonight is taking that step, but there are banked in time to where we can look at every single thing that we are approving tonight. This approval tonight is to get us to the next step so we can continue the conversation. This is not what anybody wants on this dais or in cabinet. This is not something that we want to do. This is something that we are forced to do. And we are doing the best that we can as a cabinet, as a district, as employees, as elected officials, as everyone who is working with these kids, we are doing our very best and it is not easy. It is not easy. So we are building in that time to have those conversations in the due process way that we're supposed to have them. So I thank everyone for their hard work. I thank you for the hard vote. I thank you for the comments because it's all the work of the board. What we're doing tonight is the work of the board. I am complete. Seeing no further comments, we are now gonna move to the vote. We are voting to approve resolution number 2324-49, reduction of particular kinds of classified services. We will start with trustee Pal Carr. I abstain. 
Thank you, Trustee Abdu Gaparro. No. Thank you, Trustee Phillips. No. Thank you, Trustee Christian. Yes. Thank you, Trustee Ruckler. Ruckler, yes. Thank you, Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. Gonzalez Hoy, yes. And I'm a yes. Thank you, Board. We are now moving on to our pulled consent items. The first pulled item was item C4, ratification of negotiated non-bond change order. Trustee Reckler, you pulled this item for discussion. Go ahead. I did. I just have a, a brief question, please. So I'm sorry. Give me just a second. So on the district office security fencing project change order number one, it says that the change order needs to happen because uh, basically it sounds like somebody didn't draw the drawing correctly, that there's the addition of one section of chain link fence to close an access point behind the dumpster enclosure not identified on the contract drawings. So ooh, I, little, I let a little New York out there just for a minute. Um, Mr. Fries, would you be able to speak to that? And is that correct that it wasn't on the drawing and so now we need to uh, come back and revisit that? Yes, I can answer that question. So there was a section of fence that separated our property to our neighbor's house to the south side of the property. Uh, that fence was removed by the owner of that property. So it left about a six foot section of fence between the back of our trash enclosure uh, and our parking lot that was not included in the original scope as that fence had existed prior to the project uh, starting or being bid. So um, we had to add that section of fence to properly enclose the parking lot. So if I understand correctly, at the time of the drawing, it was there, but it was then taken. That's correct. Out. And who owns that? Is that something that the district owns or is that the? It, it's on a shared property line. So the, the section was probably put up years ago it was a wood fence that was there. Um, like I said, it was only about six foot long. So the section of the fence had been removed and across the property line, obviously it came onto our property from the, from the neighbors. Um, but since it was taken down, whether it was rotted out or however it happened, um, but we felt that it was necessary that we enclose that section back to our existing chain link fence on that side. Okay. Thank you. Board, any other, I'm sorry. Board, any other questions? Trustee Reckler, did you have another question? No, I was going to move the item. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, so I'll go ahead and move C4, ratification of negotiated non-bond change orders. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, board. Any comments? Go ahead, Trustee Reckler. I mean, I just want to make sure it's drawn correctly. That, I mean, that's the point of pulling it is just that the, that the drawings are correct so that it's bid properly and the you know, you're, it's not coming back for a change order. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, I'm um, sorry, any further comments? No? Let's move to the vote. Trustee Palcar? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Abdu Gab Parvo? Abstain. Thank you. Trustee Phillips? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Christian? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Reckler? Reckler, yes. Thank you. Clerk Gonzalez Hoy? Yes. Thank you, and I'm a yes. We are now moving to pulled consent item C6. Trustee Reckler, you pulled this item. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. So if you would like to go ahead, go right ahead, because mine is just all about dates and timing. Trustee Phillips, you had something inside of the contracts that you would like to talk about. Go ahead. Um, It's the pickleball contract. Um, and I know there are a lot of pickleball lovers, and I don't want anybody to hit me with a pickleball racket. Um, but uh, tonight, I just kind of got to say it how I see it. Um, I think pickleball is cool, but if we're going to spend $40,000 uh, to teach kids how to play pickleball, um, maybe we should spend that money to hire a PE teacher or a part-time PE teacher versus hiring an outside organization to teach something that a PE teacher could teach. Um, that's my opinion. Um, you know, I also think 
that uh, the Pickleball Association uh, has been trying to figure out a way to get the tennis courts that, uh, well, I know they've been trying to figure out a way to get the tennis courts uh, that belong to the school district. Um, and I, I think that's where this is headed ultimately. Um, but for now, uh, I think the $40,000 should be used to hire, uh, a, even if it's a part-time PE teacher, to actually come in and go to the schools and teach medical ball. Uh, those are my comments, thank you. Thank you so much, Trustee. President yeah. Smith, I'm sorry. I was wondering if you or uh, Trustee Phillips could just mention to or point out for all of us, which contract specifically that is, is it growing together? Like which one's the one with Pickleball? I don't see it. I thought I had reviewed them, but I can't. I have it. Uh, I have to pull it up. I don't have it. I'm not looking at it. Let's take a minute and let's see if we can find it. CBO Moses, if you can find it. Oh, I have it. Hang on Rusty Reckler, go ahead. So it is, sorry, it is WCC Public Ed Fund that acts as the fiscal sponsor, and it's paid for out of 21st Century and ELOP, and it's on page, no page number, sorry, 18. Eight, 18, yes, thank you. I just found it. Thank you so much. Thank you, board. Trustee Reckler, did you have comments about this item? Uh, no, I don't have comments about this item, except that the pickleball people seem to have more money than GOD. I don't know where they got it all from, but whatever they're doing, we need to tap their secrets. Um, but my comment on contracts is, is that there are several contracts in here that are again coming late to the board. So there's a contract for Ms. Taylor, which was initiated 11-223. There's an instruction partners that's out of the superintendent's budget that came on August 30th. It looks like there's Playworks uh, for Murphy that was from October. And then there's a slew of other contracts for community schools grant, CSG, I'm assuming that's what, it, what that is, which is better, but they're starting like at the end of January. So I just wanted to understand what's happening so that these um, are coming late to the board and I'm assuming commencing prior to board approval. Good evening, board, President Smith Foles, trustees. Thank you for the question. The business service team is clear that whenever a contract is initiated, it should not begin until it receives board approval. However, what we're finding with our process is that as people are completing uh, the lengthy process of after the contractor is vetted and in our RFP book, um, it goes through several iterations. Some are taking longer than other than others. Um, so what I can tell you, first of all, is that, uh, for example, the Elijah Taylor, the Taylor made contract that was initiated early on, but that vendor has not started any services. Um, I know that because I was involved in that contract from the beginning. She's waiting to be approved so that she can start services. However, the paperwork was not updated, unfortunately. So it looks like it's an older date, but that those services haven't been retained. Uh, some departments are better than others in terms of their expedience with getting these forms in, and others are, it's a laborious process, so they're not updating their paperwork and it's taking more time to get them approved. So I understand your concern, and I think moving forward, we need to ensure that we get them to update um, those forms. Some of them are initiated early on, and they wait, and they're in holding patterns, and then when they finally come through, they look outdated. Um, however, there are a few that I do know work has begun, and they're still late, and those are departments that we're working directly with in order to make sure that they clean up their processes because we're very clear that we do not give approval to start work until the school board has approved and um, allow the contract to move forward. So I'll be more mindful of that and I'll make sure the team is checking that as well. Okay, thank you. And then if nobody else has any other questions, I just do have a brief comment at the end. Board, can we get a motion? Clerk gonzalez Hoy. Thank you, President Zinvolz. I'll make a motion that we approve all the contracts except for the pickleball uh, pickleball contract, which I would like to remove completely. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. 
Thank you, um, Trustee Christian. Board, are there comments? I'm sorry, comments? Comment. Go ahead. Um, I was serious when I talked about, you know, hiring a PE teacher. So if there are funds that we can use, and it sounds like there are because we're paying for this, go ahead. Hi, good evening, Trustee Phillips. Um, if you notice the funding source of this pickleball contract, it is the after school services grant funding. That fun those funds can only be used for enrichment. They cannot be used to hire a teacher. Um, some of the grant funding specifically states that it has to be um, an enrichment separate from academics because the the program warrants that we're giving children a whole experience. Um, while some of our after school funding can fund um, teacher tutoring after school hours, they cannot hire a teacher. Okay. Whatever the person is called, whether they're called, because we're clearly hiring somebody to teach pickleball now because the person's going to teach pickleball, right? So you can call them whatever you want to call them. You can call them the after school pickleball teacher man, you could call him pickleball man, teach, coach, PE. I don't really care. I'm just saying that I am in support of, if we want to do pickleball, I am in support of using the money to hire someone that is here, right? Or that can be here, you know, to actually do enrichment. So you call them whatever you want to call them. That's, I'm, you, you get what I'm saying? Thank you, Trustee Phillips. Trustee Reckler and then Clerk gonzalez Hoy. Trustee Reckler, go ahead. You know, I'm sorry. I do have a question, though. So the school day ends, and then a teacher, whether they're a PE teacher or whether they're a teacher, applies for this position. Is there a problem with that? I mean, do you have to, can you not hold a credential and teach pickleball in the after-school program? I think there's several creative ways that you could approach it. However, there is not a job description for pickleball. <laughs> could you find a staff member that wanted to engage in an after school activity? Sure. Um, but the way in which the after school programs are structured, the reason why we have so many contractors with that program is because we really try and uh, recruit teachers to take on after school hours. But to be honest, the number of teachers available to do after school work is um, is decreasing and we're having a difficult time recruiting even for tutoring. So it's, it's a problem that is multifaceted. Um, sure, you could pay an hourly rate for a teacher to teach pickleball, but there would have to be, um, that would have to go through the after school program coordinator probably need to de defer that to Martine Blake to see exactly uh, how they're programming for after school. Um, I know that as a principal, when teachers worked after school, it was always directed by the principal. So I think it's a question we probably could bring back when we have Martine or, um, or Ms. Casey Blackburn to answer it directly. Um, but if you're talking pickleball directly, I mean, sure, I guess, but um, yeah, I, 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 okay, I'm gonna pass it on to, excuse me board, or um, excuse me, cabinet and board, before we move on, we need to extend. Oh. It snuck up on us. So can we extend to 1030? Can I get a motion? We probably won't use it all, but I wanna make sure we have enough time to answer these questions. Mm -hmm. Can we get a motion to extend to 1030? Uh, I make a motion. I make a motion that we extend until 1030. I second that. Can we go to the vote, please? Trustee Powell Carr? Yes. Thank you, Trustee Abdu God. Abdu Gapar Ro. Yes. Thank you, Trustee Phillips. Yes. Thank you, Trustee Christian. Yes. Thank you, Trustee Reckler. Reckler, yes. Thank you, Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. Yes. Thank you, and I'm a yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. Cabinet, please go ahead. Um, yes, good evening. Um, so I wanted to just talk about the after school programs. And having been here 20 years, 
it looks very different than it did 20 years ago. And so before we would hire most of our staff, they would be our after school directors. We would hire teachers and parents to work in those programs. As time has gone on, um, we it is very difficult to find staff. So we contract a lot of community-based organizations. So like BACR, sometimes the YMCA and other programs. Once we contract with those programs, then we build out the program. Many times the programs that we contract with, based on student need and enrichment that students are interested in, then other activities come that they want. So this may be an activity that was brought to this, I don't know which school, how many schools they're supporting, but um, then the agency, then you know request and so we look for other organizations that already have that infrastructure and one of the things i do want to say and what has changed since i've been at the site is that you've heard that our teachers work really hard and our paraprofessionals are also working really hard some of them do go and work for our after school programs, but they're hired directly by the CBOs. And they may also be hired directly by these organizations. So I just wanna say that that probably happens, but in terms of oversight by our principals, that is not really happening right now. But we do wanna to continue to offer the enrichment. Does that make sense? Jordan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, CAO Johnson. I'm going to go to Clerk Gonzalez Hoy, back to Trustee Phillips, and back to Trustee Ruckler. Clerk Gonzalez Hoy, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to respond um, to Trustee Phillips' request. I think that um, I, I agree with Trustee Phillips about his request that may be pickable. It's not the best use of the funds. Um, but I also don't want us to be the ones choosing what that money will be used for, for those four schools, because even though we're telling them tonight, like, we don't think that this is actually the best thing for the funds, like go back and think about like what other areas you would like to use those funds for that will lead to student after school success. Um, I also don't want us to dictate them, even though I fully agree with you, Trustee Phillips, that I would appreciate a PE teacher, right? Uh, but I also don't think that it'd be fair for us to make that decision for those leaders and those four schools. So that's why uh, my request would just be like for us to give the message, right? The pickable is not the best that maybe use, but allow them to to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I believe I said uh, Trustee Phillips and then Trustee Rutherford. Trustee Phillips, go ahead. Um. Uh, Mr. Clark, I'm I'm fine with that. Um, I just I know things happen for a reason, and we do things and we evolve. But there's something about taking money from the district and giving it to a nonprofit for them to then hire district staff that just doesn't make complete sense to me. Um, and I get it that there's reasons that things happen, but again, taking district funds, giving them to a CBO to then hire district staff who already are district staff. Uh, I. I and I know that's probably a longer conversation and I'm not trying to have it right now, but I would hope that a pin could be put in that and at some point it could be brought. It's almost like contracting out to ourselves. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'm gonna get to Trustee Reckler and then if anybody in cabinet or Dr. Hurst would like to say something, it would be the time to do that. Trustee Reckler, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so if I may fully understand from my colleagues, is it the cost of the program or is it the, the offering itself that's a concern? So the way that I'm hearing it, and this is just the way that I'm hearing it, I'm hearing it's kind of a twofold thing. 
One, I think we need to bring back how we determine our after school programs and what that looks like because it's been a shift. Um, there's been a shift in how we do after school programs. So one, I'm hearing, let's bring back after school programs and have a conversation about it. And then I'm hearing inside that conversation, how are we funding? How is the funding happening? Am I, is that what you're saying or no, Trustee Phillips? It is um, only in two ways, right? And very briefly in the sense that we just voted on layoffs and now we're talking about paying someone else potentially to do what is essentially PE. I get it, it's after school. But then in addition, the last thing that I heard was that sometimes we're paying people who are then turning around and hiring our people, which we could have done. So it is a funding thing, but it's a, it's a, it's a, two, a two for almost. Trustee Regler, did that clear it up for you? So, yeah, what I'm getting from it is that it's the offering. Perhaps this is not the proper offering and that perhaps it's expensive or it's not the best spend for the money. Is it, would that be accurate? I think that yes and. So I think there's a yes and to it. We, If we look outside of just pickleball, we'll hit with what Trustee Phillips is saying. If we look at just pickleball, we'll hit also what Trustee Phillips said in the beginning. Is this the best use of funding for this forty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000? And then the conversation about how are we looking at our after school programs and how are we, what's the kind of train to the funding with after school programs? Dr. Hurst, did you capture that? Well, I just wanted to just add just a couple of things, if I may. So, so one, uh, what you were saying, Trustee Phillips, about um, not district funds. So these are ELOP funds, correct? So, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Moses, they're not district funds. These are grant funds. So I just wanted to make that clarification. And then also, Ms. Moses, as far as how this is decided, I do have the opinion that these schools that we're servicing have decided to move in this direction. And I wanted to kind of um, go on what you said, Clerk Gonzalez Hoy, that um, these schools decided this activity. And I wanna say also, there probably was some student involvement. So to take that away from them and to say, we're going to recommend that you go back and think of a different activity um, that means we have to go back and do some work with uh, principals and potentially students. So I just wanted to share that as well. CBO Moses, this is the buffet that we talk about, correct? Yes, this, okay. this organization would be in the community partnership book. Okay, they went through the vetting. They are, they're in the buffet booklet. And then some sites look through the booklet and said, yo, pick a ball. And then they talked to people and said, yo, pickleball. And then everybody was like, yeah, pickleball. And then they then moved towards the pickleball direction. Is that accurate? Okay. Yes. Uh, Clark gonzalez Hoy. I think that to answer Trustee Reckler's questions, if I may, so why I'm also agreeing on pulling it, is because I think that for after school programs, majority of the time, 95% of the time, we can, our own staff can provide those services, right? Like contracting out with YMCA, like we spend tons of money on that. We, our own staff can't provide the services, right? So we have no other option. In this case, and I don't know if this is exactly what Trustee Phillips was saying, this is a service potentially one of our staff members could do, right? So instead of contracting out like we've been doing for, for a long time and it's been increasing, right? We've been hearing from labor that we continue to outsource jobs. It kind of feels the same way. Like this does not feel to me like we have no other choice but to contract out with this organization. Like to me, we actually could have the choice potentially of hiring our own staff. Like I understand there's like issues that we gotta figure out, but, and unfortunately it just became a pickable, but it's not about pickable. It's, it's about the idea of contracting out services that could be paid for, our own, for, our, for someone in, 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 inside our organization. Thank you for that clarity. Anything else? Anything else from board? Anything else from cabinet? 
Tressie Phillips. Ten seconds, not to be petty. If we get a grant or a donation, I consider that district funds. <laughs> what I'm doing. Okay. Anything else? Trustee Ruckler. Thank you. Can I just go back to an, an original comment that doesn't have anything to do with pickleball? Sure. <laughs> okay. So I do think there are opportunities to tighten up the contract process um, just in terms of what you're asking people. The strategic vetting form, I think, could get down to one page, which I think would be more helpful. And I really want to encourage the dates to be correct. And it, I feel good knowing that things aren't starting, but alignment is important, especially in our world, because it makes me always think, even if I see it's budgeted and we have a freeze or we have different freezes, I'm just not clear how the money is being controlled. So I want to encourage contracts coming, you know, within the two weeks before or whatever, so that we we know that they're solid and aligned and that there's dollars and that they're, you know, we're, our, our funding is, your or your funding is um, secure and you feel good about it. So that that's my comment on that. Thank you so much. Board, we've had a great discussion. We're gonna move to the vote. We're voting on the motion to accept the contracts minus the pickleball contract. That's what we're voting on. We're going to go to the vote. Trustee Powell Carr? Yes. Trustee Abdu Parvro? Yes. Thank you, Trustee Phillips? Yes. Thank you, Trustee Christian? Yes. Thank you, Trustee Reckler? Reckler, no. Thank you, Trustee Gonzalez. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. It's fine. Oh, Gonzalez Hoy, yes. Thank you. And I'm a yes. Thank you so much, board. That passes. We are now moving on to, um, again, F1 and 2 have been pulled. We are now moving on to G, comments from the Board of Education and future agenda items. Board, if we could do two-minute comments, please. Anyone have comments? Okay, we're going to go around this way. We're going to go with Trustee Phillips. I saw Trustee Christian's hand and Kurt Gonzalez Hoy. Go ahead, Trustee Phillips. Thank you. Um, we really need to have a serious conversation about school safety. Um, there was a time when we relied heavily on school resource officers in addition to others. Um, and then there was a policy decision not to do that anymore. And that was by and large replaced by the positive school climate director and the campus safety officers. And tonight we have voted to eliminate the positive school climate director and some of the campus safety personnel. Based on that, I really don't know what the safety plan is for our kids. Um, and it is that, that is, that is scary to me. Um, I want to take a moment to talk about, uh, Mayor Anderson. Uh, she was a great woman. Um, and we know her because of all of the civic work that she did, but she was a really nice woman. Um, she took time to talk to folks. Um, she took time to talk to me and to others and to give advice willingly and freely. Um, when she would see me and my wife and my children, um, she would stop uh, and talk to them uh, and greet them and catch up with them. She was just a nice woman. And so she will be uh, missed. Uh, and I know that we're going to uh, do a resolution uh, from the district uh, for her, um, and I think that that is a great thing. Um, lastly, and I only have 15 seconds, but I heard that Kim Moses got an award for something. I love to hear what that was about. 
Um, and there's some other things I want to say about her and some other cabinet members, but I am out of time. I will come back next week. Uh, CBO Moses, what, what was your award for? One of my colleagues nominated me for AXA Region 6 Business Administrator of the Year, and um, AXA Region 6 um, awarded me with that honor of being selected as the AXA Region 6 Business Administrator of the Year. Well-deserved. Thank you. Well-deserved. Uh, Trustee Christian, your board comments, please, sir. Yes, uh, thank you, President smith Um uh, And also, I just want to give thanks to, you know, the staff, you know, for all the hard work they do and to keep this district moving. And um, and just to say on part of safety, uh, we got the safety committee coming back, you know, in operation where we're going to be in touch with what's going on throughout the whole district. Thank you for bringing the safety committees back. And, um, you know, as we push forward through these difficult times, um, and, and it's, it's rough, you know, which I came out of safety. You know, I was a good safety officer at Osweet High School. So, but, um, but like I say, you know, we got to move through these challenges. Um, I want to say, you know, I'd like to see us, the Swahili school, you know, uh, like we had a Mandarin school. And of course, we can have a Swahili school um, that would be beneficial for our school district. And also, I want to say is that um, you know, you know, the decisions that we make, tough decisions, but we know we, you know, we just got to continue to push through. And so that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trustee Christian. Trustee Reckler, go ahead, and then Clerk gonzalez Hoy. Thank you. So first, a passing that I'd like to note that uh, certainly for the Kensington, Korematsu, and El Cerrito High School community, Mary Shaughnessy, who was a parent um, known to many of us, uh, passed away yesterday after a long and valiant battle with cancer. Um, very giving woman extremely funny so funny oh my gosh but giving she was a counselor with the college of Al uh, with the college of alameda and dedicated her entire life to helping kids climb the barrier onto success and um you know she will be deeply deeply missed and so i just wanted to send my thoughts out to matt and the boys and i understand there'll be a celebration of life soon and uh i will keep you updated that's a Great loss for our community. Um, as far as items for agendize, uh, for uh, to be agendized, I've sent in several policies over the last few months that I would like to have looked at. Um, one of them is uh, AB 1078 and whether that needs to get worked into textbook adoption. I've asked to look at textbook adoption or book, book banning in general, like our book review process to make sure that that's solid and sound. I've asked to relook at bullying and harassment policies, especially because of the LGBTQIA uh, outing of students that has been going on in other districts. I wanna make sure that we have the strongest policies to be safe and secure. I've also handed in policy reviews for the CBOC for graduations and for preserving uh, artwork on campus. And uh, in the next few days, I'll be handing in the policy on 4211 recruitment and selection. Um, so I would like to know if and when those will be agendized for discussion by the board. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trustee Reckler. Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. Thank you, President Smith Folds. Um, first, I want to thank you for the decorations tonight. I know you came early and you decorated uh, to celebrate celebrate Black History Month. So thank you for doing that and the dinner and the little gifts. Really appreciate you for that. Uh, to Trustee Reckler's response. Uh, they have been sent to my committee governance, which is going to start meeting um, in a couple weeks, actually. Uh, so we're going to be reviewing all those policies first, and then they're going to come back to the board. Um, then, you know, I want to mention two things. Um, hope I don't get emotional because I know I make Dr. Hurst uncomfortable when I cry. But uh, tonight, um, you know, I took two votes that I think have been the hardest votes I've taken as a board member. 
um, and they were hard and I feel like I have a pit in my stomach and, um, but we had to, right? And I, I, I don't know, I'm definitely not going to sleep for a few nights because it was difficult, but I think that's why we got elected to make those difficult choices. Um, and then the second piece, you know, I wanted to also just, um, I know we're going to celebrate here at a future board meeting, but I wanted to um, celebrate very quickly the life of a friend of mine, which was Susan Binder, who was a teacher at Kennedy and teacher at Alcerito High School who passed a couple of weeks ago. Um, and she really gave her life for this district and for our students. Um, and uh, she truly was amazing. Um, and I know that for UTR, she um, was part of their executive board and part of the bargaining team. And uh, she just she just gave her life to this district. So I'm appreciative of her. Uh, I know she's in a better place with, with her late husband, uh, which makes me happy that she's with him, who she loved very much. So I know Alcerito had a big hit about that. So my heart goes to them and her family. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Clerk Gonzalez Hoy. Board, I want to let you know that I consider myself um, lead in the anti-racism anti -racism push that we're doing with the district. Um, I think that it's something that is vital that we have to do. I think it's conversations that we have to have. With that being said, I would like to read the following statement. The action of listening when you are being called out and called in is the work of anti-racism. When, while, and after I say this statement, if you feel uncomfortable with my words, I invite you to call yourself out of privilege and call yourself into the space of learning from others. Trustee Reckler, when you abruptly left before the end of the board meeting on January 24th, you missed Trustee Phillips' request for us to be more direct with each other. Trustee Phillips, when you missed the retreat on January 25th, you missed Trustee Reckler's tearful ask to speak at El Cerrito's graduation and the subsequent approval of that request. Trustee Reckler, you said right before you left on the 24th to stand up to bullying. Using fragility to ensure that your wants are secured is beyond bullying, it's manipulation. The reason I always feel forced to give, to have to give grace is because you live in a bubble of protection where an entrenched ranking based on race and emotional range has white tears trump everything else. The moisture that comes from you, it sends a message of rage, not a heavy cloud of love, want, needs, guilt, or shame. How dare someone like me, us, hold you accountable? Your tears trigger preloaded responses and you know it and you use it without thought or care. It brings men to their knees and it creates this shallow need for them to protect you. It exposes the societal rank with black and brown at the very bottom. Black women see the misuse of your tears and feel that double standard like a wind struck nerve of a rotting tooth. You want nothing but crying. Nothing exposes character more than how you treat people when you believe that you don't need them. Your treatment of board members before the censure and after shows everything. You shifted zero narrative personally with me. What was done was a reinforcement that some don't have to be accountable for their choices. Yes, their choices. What was done was a reinforcement of the concept and normalization that even when proven wrong by the rules created for your ease, when the system says you're white, you are protected. This is, after all, your system. Your carefully placed Lego blocks try to build a logic that dictates how can the system or anyone that benefits from the system be wrong? You will continue to swim in the privilege of the system that was created for your leisure and others of us will continue to be forced to not be able to sleep at night and weigh the consequences of every word we speak and every step we take. As a black woman and leader, I will forever have to pick battles when you get to start wars all because you used your tears as weapon for distraction and destruction. This last vote was not that of grace. It was that of forced survival. See, if I was the only one to say no to your demand to speak at graduation, even though not being appointed to graduation is a clear result of your action, 
then I would not be seen as the only one holding you to the universal consequences of choices you made. But I would be seen as heartless, a bully, mean, and uncaring. The narrative that you tell and retell is constructed of the character traits laced in microaggressions and blanketed in the bullhorn of dog whistles. Character traits which you can project onto everyone else as to maintain your victimhood. The angry black woman, the scary black man, I'm being bullied, they are being mean to me, this is a witch hunt. They don't like me when I tell them what to do. These same sentiments have followed us throughout time, binding the black and brown people in this country, and yes, on this board, into historical survival norms. So the grace that was extended to you was not done because you were right. I may outwork you, out-volunteer you, out-serve you, but because I out-melanate you, you are given value, care, and draped with excuses and adorned with stickers of thanks for doing less than what we should be expected to do. We extended you not just an olive branch, but a redwood branch, that based on history, you're just going to burn to keep yourself warm. You are wrong, yet you get promoted and protected, while I tell the truth and I'm branded with the scarlet letter. There is a golden rule of leadership. Hold yourself accountable so others don't have to. But that doesn't apply to everyone. After all, this is your system. This system, your system, says you can only be tall when I'm on my knees. This system has an emotional attachment to the destruction of truth tellers and exposers of privilege. But I have a moral obligation and physical need to continue to be a server and leader for all WCCUSD students, parents, teachers, and staff. I will no longer be forced into rewarding bad behavior. Enjoy your grace. I am complete. Board, thank you for allowing me to read that statement. We are now going to move to board reflection and feedback. Board, we are at 1028. If you don't have reflection or feedback, you can skip that part. If you do, I will open it up right now. Trustee Phillips, it's one minute for reflection and feedback. Go ahead, sir. Um, my first, I have a question. Can we actually extend the meeting for 30 minutes? You can put that motion forward, sir. Um, I move to extend the meeting for 30 minutes. Is there a second? I, I will second it, but I, I thought we had heard from our parliamentarian that we could only extend once um, as of rules, but we I mean, did. she's not here and I don't know the rules. So <laughs> We did uh, hear from our parliamentarian that it's only one extension, I believe, Trustee Phillips. If you know something different, go ahead and speak to that. But I think I remember we can only extend once. Go ahead. Do you remember differently than that, sir? Honestly, in this moment, I I don't. We have one minute left. I just, it, if I may, go ahead and take your minute, sir. I was ready this evening to just say I think that this was a good meeting and that it was well run and to say that when we got to the the critical part that I actually have nothing to say um critical about the meeting um and I that is what I wanted to say. And I, I I can't say that in this moment. I I my dad um was a was a great man, but he um could be a, a very uh hard person at times. Um he was a career police officer, he was on SWAT, uh he did karate, he was kind of a badass. Um and but he would tell me um, that I, I, as as a leader, that I need to praise people um, in, in public, and, and that I need to reprimand people um, in private, um, and and that's what I have tried to do 
And that's something that I would like people to do with me. Um, regardless of what Trusty Reckler has done uh, or not done, all of that could have been said in private. And, and then to say it, and then the meeting is over and she can't even respond to it. I don't think that that's fair. I think, and that's why I asked for the meeting to be continued because I don't think it's fair for her not to be able to say anything after all of that. And I don't know if she even would want to say anything, but I, I think that this was a good meeting. President Smith holds, I think you did a good job managing this meeting. I was going to make a joke um, that that one of the things I liked is that everybody spoke for the same amount of time, including you. You like to do the presidential privilege thing, right? Um, and you hadn't done it. And then you, you saved it for the very end for what just happened with Trusty Reckler. And you just went way over and just spent the time talking about her. I know that this board, and I've been on some controversial boards and in some controversial situations, but the censure that she got, she got it. I didn't agree with it, but she got it. And I think we need to leave that woman alone. That's my personal opinion, and it's not because she's white. It is not because she's a woman. It's because... That is the professional thing to do, in my opinion. I think you did a good job tonight, and I don't want to take that away from you. You did a great job, and and I'll leave it at that. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Trustee Phillips. I appreciate you recognizing the job that I did tonight. I would ask you to, once again, call yourself into the space of learning from others. What I did tonight was exactly what needs to be done if we're moving to an anti-racist district, in my humble opinion. Because if we don't call things as we see them, then we will continue to do what we have always done, which is not address issues of microaggression, not address issues of disparity, not address issues of fragility, and not address issues of racism that run thick in our, in our district and in our country. It may have been uncomfortable. That doesn't mean it didn't need to be said. It may have taken what people perceive as a step back, doesn't mean it didn't need to happen. What happened is conversation has to happen at levels in public, not only in private, I have sat in this seat as board trustee and been dressed down and policed many of time. And I've come back and I've held my head up and I've done what I needed to do. I ask that for everybody on the board. That's professional. That's being accountable. But I will not be policed into saying what I need to say or don't need to say or when I need to say it or don't need to say it. Sitting in this position, I will use it to make sure that I'm attacking anti-racism every single time. And if it's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable. We need to get uncomfortable with being, we need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. We are all adults and we're all elected officials. But I will not take back what I said. I will not take back how I said it. Trustee Reckler has the opportunity to respond because we are going over because this is a conversation that needs to be to completion. If anybody else has anything that they need to say, please raise your hand, unmute yourself, and let's have the conversation. I am complete. Anyone have anything else to say? Seeing none, I will move on to the next scheduled board meeting. It will be February the 14th, 2024 at Lavanya Dejan Middle School. We already went, no one had Trustee Phillips and I did reflections. We are now adjourned at 1035. Thank you, board.